be live and going. Let's see right here. Let me see, making sure over here on our page that uh, we've got uh, everything going live. So you can say hi to everybody, AJ. Yes, uh, Craig is about to go live on a couple of our feeds. So everybody, a warm welcome. My name is AJ Chabria. Next to me, as always, is Craig Bell. He'll do a proper intro in a moment, but you will see the man in black uh, with the beautiful 10-gallon hat. That is Lane Evans, and he's our guest tonight. We're so proud to have him. Lane, how are you this evening? I'm good. Good. Glad to be here, guys. Good, good. Craig Bell, if you're ready, let's roll. All right. James Scott Campbell, let's get this podcast started. Hello, you are at the net. And welcome, friends, to another episode of the At the Net podcast, powered by Texmo Productions. Working the soundboards in the back of the house are our producers, D Mac and Dave Bray. Time to say hello to your hosts, Craig Bell and AJ Shabria, as they're about to take us through three sets of tents, talking life and all the news as it seems. So that, ladies and gentlemen, Craig Bell. All right, that's thanks to our Ethernet podcast. Podcast, I can't say podcast tonight for some reason. I got tongue tied. So <laughs> let me let me start all over again. Can we do that? Is oh, that that's please a, do. That'll be our blooper reel. Good. All right. <laughs> thanks to our Ethernet podcast girl. That would be Margot Carter for that groovy hip groovy slash hip it's both introduction and welcome fans of the great game you're listening to season one episode 86 can you believe that unreal 86, 86. of at the net podcast that would be with aj chabria right there AJ me and craig bell next to me cv1 as we call him and we're talking the great game of tennis as it seems, seems to, to us. us thanks also go out to our good amigos at tex-mex productions that would be one darian d mac mcbrayer and dave the brain who did help us tonight momentarily we did see a brain siding from if, back of the house back East. That's right, in Maryland. Yeah. Uh, he, he was helping me be on the soundboards and actually make us look live tonight, and uh, we're real people. We we're, are real people. We're not just, uh, just d- digital apparitions. Nope. Real deal. We're, we are. We're real deal, and that man is a real deal here in a second. We'll bring him on just in two seconds. Also, be sure to check out our good work on Fireside, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Google. Boy, it's, it's, this is Google. Google. I was about to say Google podcast. You had God, uh, the Brazilian Davis Cupper Jeez. on your brain. Man, I've been gone four days, and you know it's like I'm on vacation. My brain's just not thinking. Google Podcast, Anchor Breaker, CastBox, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, Spotify, and YouTube. That's all the, basically, the communication sites the kids find popular today, right? That's right. And if you're a female, sorry, guys, we are biased to the female voice. And if you'd like to read the opening intro, like the, the groovy hip Margot Carter, let's, just let us know. You can uh, direct message us, email us. Definitely. Call our digits. We have some digits, don't we? We got digits, okay. 10 of them. Well, speaking of groovy hip, this man put the ool in cool. Did you know that? The ip and hip. That would be Lane Evans. All right, Lane. Lane Evans from Norman, Oklahoma. Boomer. How you doing, Sooner? Yeah, we've, we've had, this is unbelievable. We've had two guests recently in the last month. They're both OU fans. Can you believe that? Philip Farmer was yes. the other. That's right. But this guy, like I said, he put the ool and cool in the he really did. and hip. This man did it way before woke was woke <laughs> was even a word. You know, woke was just an infancy. You know, this man was out there. I, I know that he was. He knows what groovy is. He, he's he's done this probably a few times too. And it doesn't mean two. This means peace, right? <laughs> he probably remember, remembers that from the sixties. He's not old enough. But I think we no, are. He's not old enough. No. I was barely born no. in the sixties. You guys actually remember it. Oh, yeah. They may have had a six in it, but it's not in the six. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Yeah, well, Lane Evans, what a pleasure it is. I, I wore my red hat. You're going to get one of these also, too, you know, from right. us uh, in the OU colors, red and white. So we knew that you, you were coming on. So in honor of, of our buddy Lane Evans from Norman, Oklahoma, right now. Actually, are you in Moore or Norman? I can't. I'm in Norman. Norman, I'm in okay. Norman. 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 Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I knew it was around Moore, Norman. They kind of, they're, they're, they're kind of a metropolitan area, yeah. you know. Yeah, they, they, it's a megalopolis. They have an office in Moore. So, yeah. <laughs> but uh, we're glad to have you on. Thanks for joining Thanks us. Thanks for having me. Thank oh, you. Oh Thank my, you. Oh, my goodness. I mean, this, you know, I don't know if AJ went to sleep last night. Did you go to sleep last night? <laughs> I was pretty pumped. I oh, mean, man. the number of certifications, oh. accolades, national level awards on this man. I'm pumped, man. This is going to be great. Is, is there anything? Uh, it's all just paper. It's all just paper. <laughs> is there anything that you want to do that you haven't done yet? Yes. A- that's a great question. Oh, uh, good. When I retire, I have it on my, li- my bucket list uh-huh. to go to farrier school. Farrier. Farrier. Yes. Farrier school. I want to be a horseshoer. 
That's correct. Yes, and just down the road to the south, there's the Oklahoma right. Horseshoeing Association, right, right there on right I-35. 35. <laughs> right down 35. Yep. Yeah, I've been up that road too many yeah, times. Yeah, you, you know that road. Like a, I've never like, stopped. I've never stopped there. At the, where but you, I've seen it. I know exactly where that is. It's probably about yep. mm, the eight Oklahoma to ten, Horseshoeing School. Yep. Is that eight or ten miles south of you, maybe? Yeah, about that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. right down 35. Well, he's got the hat for it. So he's got the hat. He's probably Definitely. got the jeans. He's got the boots. And now, now right. he just needs to learn how to take that uh, horse uh, a foot and then turn it upside down and, and start pulling yeah. those nails out and, and tapping them Put in. Put the right? hoof up in my arm here. I've got to figure out how to do that. Well, are you, you going to do any, you know, bronc riding, barrel racing, bull riding? No. You gonna, no? no. We talked about that last night. Lori and I talked about that last night, and she's not going to let me do that. No, no, no. no as no, much no. as I would like to do it, she's not going to let me do it. <laughs> I'd say you'd be a good bull rider. I can see Lane Lane yeah. Evans. That's a, a good athletic. That's a good cowboy rodeo name, Lane Evans. Next up, in the shoot, Lane Evans on Bodacious. there be, be a lot of bro- broken parts laying around in the arena. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've watched some good bull riding before. Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, Lane, no, we, we really appreciate uh, you, know, you coming on. There, you, you, hold, you hold a lot of designations that most pros, you know, if you, if you just held one of these, they'd be happy to do that. So, you know, it's a real honor. You know, uh, Lane's on the board of USPTA, which is uh, the PGA of the tennis world, uh, USPTA, you know, for here in the United States. Lane's a board member actively. Uh, this is your second year, is that correct? Yeah, second year. We just went through uh, uh, interviews for the, the next uh, cycle. All right. You're going to stay around, hopefully? I'd love to, but uh, we'll see how it goes. See how, see how the ball. I mean, because really, last year wasn't a year. I mean, that was just kind of. It, it was. Yeah, that was. A, it was what, very difficult. Yes. Very difficult. And they're we, just. Um, go ahead. We, um, you know, we made some headway. Uh, we did as much as we could, I think, but um, it was a. It was a. It was a. It was a tough call. Uh, nobody was really motivated. Everybody was really worried about jobs and themselves and their families and rightfully so um it's hard to get people motivated to to really to, you know work our agendas but um we got a lot done we, we got a lot done especially at dni we, we got a ton done so i um, very pleased with that i think you should get a do-over here you, like in ncaa college athletics yeah. you should get another year just add that add that on because i mean really uh, we were closed down uh, six weeks here, even at the club, and it was just yep. such an awkward year. And, and there were some places without the six weeks, but six months. Yeah, I think some were just yeah. reopening across the United States. Is that correct, Lane? There's some you know, probably it's places. It's funny. We we closed for just a little while. Um, I actually built a uh, a gym, uh, a workout gym in in our office garage, so that I could train my golfers in there, and some of my tennis players. Uh-huh. And uh, so we really didn't miss it. We didn't miss the gym that much, but we did miss the courts. I'm sure. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's just that's why I said you know he should get another year uh, to at least serve and and uh, now I wouldn't say be productive because obviously you're, you're productive. You're still trying to do things and trying to do oh, the yeah. best you can with what you, what you've got. Uh, yeah, the available. business of the USPTA never stops. Right. It, it, it never comes to a stop. So you've been a teaching professional forty something years, probably. Uh, 140 seconds. Yeah, 140. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. 140. Add the 100. Yeah. <laughs> right. You yeah. know, I started teaching tennis when I was in high school um, and have never stopped. Never stopped. Even through years where I was a, a club manager, I still still managed to teach a little bit. And uh, yeah, uh, 40, yeah, over 40 years. I, I, I won't go too high on that. But, yeah, it's, uh, and, and when you started, it was the tennis boom. Is that right? Like about uh, late seventies, early eighties. Yeah, yeah, it was. It, it was. Um, I graduated high school in uh, seventy six, uh-huh. and um, tennis was full blast. That was great. Yeah, we were doing great. In, in many ways, it's happening again. Um, I, I grew up in that era. Uh, of course, I'm a little younger than you both, but I remember being six or seven years old, riding a bike to the courts and putting your racket down as you wait for a public court back then. Yep. And yep. things like this are happening again in the tennis boom number two, if we can call it that. Yeah, I used to go. You know, I used to go to the courts early in the morning and just stay until night. You know, my parents never had to worry about me. They knew exactly where I was. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's starting to, it's, it's not like that anymore. The kids today have too many choices, but you know, that was, that was a nice, nice time to really learn, learn how to play and, and, and really appreciate the game. And, yeah. and you meet a lot of great people. And you know, some of the people I met as a, as a junior, I still talk to today. Love it. 
Love it. Even today. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, uh, uh, my buddy uh, Smith Anderson from down in South Carolina, he and I were juniors at the same time as little kids. And he and I won the uh, Music City Invitational in Nashville a couple of years ago. Yes. <laughs> together yeah so that was fun incredible you played together in the 70s played and together. and now that's together, tremendous yes. is that the 70s division you shouldn't say that to me. You know, <laughs> the, the, not, not quite not the quite. glorious <laughs> decade of the 70s oh, there right. you go. Sure. okay there we I go should, music you know, city ironically i'm waiting to age up i'm <laughs> waiting to age up a little bit i'm getting ready for the 65s i yeah. love it uh you know you mentioned music city in nashville our friend bill riddle uh, yep. has asked us to come it's, and we were about to do it last year and it didn't didn't really happen but it's it's his event i'm going back this time love that man and he, he speaks time, yeah. Yeah. speaks very highly of you too lane it's yeah be great yeah he's well, in my master class yeah, he did oh good he did he, in Bo, bogart as well uh-huh oh, good good hey um uh craig usually asks and he's fiddling with our yep. our feed right now but uh yep. craig usually asks what got you started in the great game yep. you mentioned you played juniors and you even taught tennis in high school in the 70s yep. um you know maybe you taught me i don't know but but tell us how you I got started I remember you i think you still owe me money <laughs> <laughs> he's one of those deadbeat customers that never pay yeah, right? deadbeat. yeah he's a deadbeat um you know, when I was a kid, I, I really gravitated toward football and basketball. Uh -huh. I, I, I loved never You know, I played them anytime I could. And um, I remember very distinctly my uh, being over at one of my friend's house playing basketball. Uh -huh. I was probably seven or eight years old. And my mom showed up. It's a Sunday. And my mom showed up. You know, I'd gone left early to play basketball. And she showed up in the car. And I'm thinking... You know, it's not haircut day. Yeah. Everything's closed. <laughs> um, I'm not in trouble, which was rare. Um, so what could she possibly want? So she, she coerced me to get in the car. We, we drove to the, to uh, uh, Blair Park in High Point, North Carolina, and they were having a tennis tournament. Yes. I have no, to this day, I have no explanation why she did that, for what reason. She never really told me, you know, through, through my whole life, she never told me. And... Um, Shortly thereafter, I started, uh, I bought I bought a racket, I guess with some lawnmower money, uh, at, uh, I think it was Kmart, when Kmart still were around. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a Doris Hart autograph, and the only reason I liked it was because it was blue. Uh -huh. Doris Hart. And so that was my first racket, and I still, ha I still had it somewhere. Um, and just started hitting balls at, at, at this little park in High Point called Mohawk Park, had two courts. And it had you know, chain link fence nets, and you know, it was usually full of rocks and glass and stuff where kids had thrown stuff out there. Right. So I would bring the broom from my home, and and broom off the courts, and we would play. You know, I broomed those courts more than I ever swept at home. My mother, <laughs> mother, trying to figure out what was going on there. But um, that that's how it started. And I once I started, I never stopped. Never stopped. Grew up playing North Carolina juniors. Yeah. And uh, of course, went to uh, uh, High Point College played there and then uh off off and running yeah that, oh, great start that, that, no that's a great start I, th I thought did you get the uh, blue racket under the blue light special at kmart um i, I believe i did I, i'm pretty sure it was less than ten dollars <laughs> do, do you have a doris heart i mean I this man has I every have, racket i have all the autographs of all the famous yeah. i mean mary hardwick alice marble but doris heart is something i don't have so i'd love a picture of that when wow. you get it, yeah when you find it <laughs> yeah uh, I've, I've never heard of Doris Hart. I've, yeah. I've, uh, you stumped me on that one. I've heard of the other ones you mentioned. Was Doris Hart? Uh, Doris, I, I, was, Doris Hart, I believe, is in the USPTA Hall of Fame. Oh, okay. All right. She's in the USPTA Hall of Fame, yeah. Hmm. Great American player. Boy, I, I, I'm a history person, and that one's that one stumped me. That's I've in, never, fact, in fact, here's another one, and I, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on her name, uh -huh. but if you go to Ken McAllister's book. Uh -huh. Yeah, like, Cattle to Courts. I've, I've read it. Yeah, me too. Great, yeah. great, great read about Texas tennis history. For sure. Rich, rich history. There is a woman in there that he mentions that went to High Point College. Really? That's where she went. That's where she went to college, High Point College. Played tennis at High Point College. Interesting. It was a rich part of te Texas tennis history. And I'd have to, I have to go back and look up her name, but 
I'll have yeah. to look that up too. We yeah. uh, we both have the book. We both read yeah. it. Oh uh, yeah, from yeah. Kenny Mac. Yeah. yeah, Kenny Mac's great. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. You know, we I, we have something in common also too with Kenny Mac. My daughter just graduated from Utah State. He actually did his master's at Utah State. At Utah State. Wow. Yeah. Oh wow, good. Yeah, it was. Uh, he, he as I posted last night or a no, couple of nights ago, Kenny Mac got back with me. He goes, hey, he goes, hey, I was up there in Logan, and I said, oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, he was quite a guy. <laughs> Kenny Mac is is he just he's great. He's he's a noted tennis historian down here in, in our part yeah. uh, of the world oh, yeah. and uh, uh, you know as far as tennis goes he knows, knows just about everything except for Lane Evans he knows if, <laughs> if Kenny doesn't know it Lane knows Lane was sure uh, really I'm, yeah uh, I, I, not, not too much he's, he's got to be the master he's he knows everything yeah he's, he's a good man but so is so yeah. is this man Lane so you, you played tennis growing up in in North Carolina yeah. did you did you ever venture out and and do any you know national tournaments did you go I, over I, I did you know it's funny I um we actually moved away from North Carolina when I was when I was young we moved actually moved to Arizona Tucson oh okay for a short period of time my father was uh, a physician and, and was doing some private practice there and um so, so I, I, I got more into tournament play out there. I played for Rencon High School um, in Tucson and uh, played one one year. Had, had a really good team the year before. Uh, got to the state tournament there and then moved back. Ironically, moved back to North Carolina from there uh, in my senior year mm -hmm. of, of high school. And I went to uh, Hunter Huss High School in Gastonia, which ironically is, is uh, where Sleepy Floyd I was at school with Sleepy Floyd at the same time. Played for the Houston Rockets, so that was a lot of fun. And James Worthy played for Asheville, Ashboro, oh, right Ash across town. Okay, which was which was kind of cool having those good basketball players around. Yeah, of course I love basketball. So yeah, was Sleepy um, really sleepy? Did he sleep a lot? I mean, did well, he, he had kind of sleepy looking eyes. That's right. that's why they, that's why they called him that. <laughs> he was clearly not sleepy with the ball oh, around no, him. No, yeah. he was a good player. Oh, no. Did you ever did you ever school him in basketball? <laughs> no, I never schooled him. I did play against him, but I never never schooled. Yeah. Speaking of guys who grew up uh, in North Kagalaki in that era, uh, did John Sadry, is he roughly yep. your age? Yeah, John's, John's a little bit older, but he, oh, he lives in Charlotte. He still lives there. He does, yeah. And, yeah, and he, uh, Andy Andrews, uh, he's in uh, Raleigh. And then a lot of those teammates, I, a lot of those great guys, uh, Mark Dillon is still in Charlotte. Matt McDonald is still there. John Joyce is in Rocky Mount. Yeah. John Joyce and I took our USPTA test together right. back in – Goodness, 80, 83, 83. I look at my, I had to look at my plaque. It's on this side uh, with the old logo. Yes. Um, Went Tim Wilkinson, Dr. Dirk. Tim, Tim, Tim was from Shelby. One. You're right. Yeah. Tim's from Shelby. Great player. Yeah. Great history of tennis in North Carolina. Great state. Big, uh, big excellent a weather. Book, did a history book in North Carolina. A lot of, lot of great, great players. Coaches, too. I, I think uh, Lane needs to write a book on North Carolina history like In Kenny. the way that Ken they've did about Texas. It. They've already done oh, it. They've oh, they've done it. Okay. Somebody beat oh, you. Yeah. Someone beat you to it? Yeah, they beat us to it. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Great book. Great book. We'll have to, we'll have to look it up. Do you know the Tim, name of it? Tim Noonan. Tim Noonan wrote the book. Tim Noonan. Okay. On North, on North Carolina tennis. He was good friends with Charlie Owens. Hmm. Charlie, you remember, played the tour a little bit. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Keith Richardson is another great player in, in North Carolina. I in North Carolina played the tour. Um, Charlie Owens is the name, uh, whether you're born in the 50s or 60s or 70s, we all know that name from yeah. the top of the USTA Southern or STA yeah. rankings yeah. always. Yeah. And then, of yeah. course, ATP, uh, you know, world ranking. Yeah. 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 It was was uh, Tim Noonan any relation to Danny Noonan? From Caddyshack. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was his cousin. Cousin. <laughs> Every time I see him, I call him Noonan. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, when I heard you say Noonan, I was yeah. like, hey, there's Dan. Got that name? Yeah. Yeah. So, sorry I couldn't pass that up. Just, too easy. So, sorry, Tim. I know. No, 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 nothing personal, but. Yeah. Too easy. Well, while we're on the first set and your background, um, tell us a little bit about how playing uh, juniors and college prepped you to be a coach or to continue to be a coach. And, uh, you know, you played at High Point. Uh, tell us about that and going from NAIA to the, the big well, time, D1. Well, you know, it was it was interesting because I, uh, it, it, I'll i kind of tie these two stories together. Please do, I, yeah. I, I played at Gastonia Hunter Huss, made it to the state tournament, did pretty well there, and then ended <laughs> up going to High Point. I wanted to go to a small school, but more importantly, I wanted to play. Yeah. And and this was right at the um, uh, it was it was, the, it was the, the right on the edge of two eras. One specialized coaching for tennis. Mm -hmm. So the basketball assistant coach was the tennis coach, 
So they don't have that anymore. They don't do that anymore. In case you guys didn't know that. <laughs> um, and also, it was right as the foreign influx of players was beginning. It was just beginning to to take place then. And um, you know, when I was a freshman, we had no foreign players. When I was a senior, uh, we had uh, one or two, one or two actually one transfer from another NAI school mm-hmm. uh, uh, to our school, but. Um, uh, it was just it was just sort of beginning, and now if you go to virtually any roster in the in the U.S., you're going to see mostly a, a foreign dominance in all those all those rosters. But um, you know, I, I loved it. I, 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 uh, I, I again, I have friends that I played on the teams with that I still talk to today. You know, it's funny. I I, uh, I got a call from a guy that I played doubles, a roommate, a guy I played doubles with in college, Kendall Han. He's a, uh, I think he's an OBGYN in, down in the Atlanta area. And uh, he's about ready to retire, and I, you know, I hadn't spoken to him in a, in a while, once in maybe five, six, seven years. And he called me right before Christmas. I was driving somewhere, and I saw his name pop up on my on the, on the dash, and I went, and it, and I picked up the phone, and it was like we'd been talking every day. Incredible. Like we didn't miss a beat, and so we just pick up a conversation right in the middle of like a conversation, and then <laughs> and then move on. And I've got you know I've got other college friends I do the same thing with. Uh, it, it really was a, a great bonding experience um something i i, I won't ever forget and uh, what's what's really funny I'll, I'll tie this story to it too please i went to i went to high point college for four years and i did not graduate that was from 76 to 80 and i um i left to to try to play a little bit and this ties back to your question a little bit yeah and I, you know it was the old american express things and you know some of those those little, little tour events and i just I, I just didn't have it. I, I didn't. I couldn't play at that level, and so that's when I sort of gravitated back to teaching. So I started it, and, and, and of course that never that never relented. That that just kept going forever. But I kept, you know, I kept telling myself, you know, I promised my mom that I would, I would go back and graduate. And um, you know, time got by, life life kicks in, and all of a sudden you look back, and you know, fifteen twenty years have passed, and you still haven't done it. So in and about. 2009, uh-huh. um, I, when we'd moved back, I'd moved back to North Carolina and uh, I, I started to look into it again because the technology now is is catching up. And so, and it's really, really interesting to go to college in two different eras of technology. No cell phones, no computers. We had pay phones, you know, no internet, no nothing. You have to just, and now you can do everything remote. So fortunately, I had a couple of professors that were still at High Point at the time that were there when I was there. They remembered you. They remembered me. And, and so they agreed to, to help me sort of navigate my pathway. So I had to take three courses at Blue Ridge Community College up in Asheville, uh, actually uh, 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 near Asheville. Uh-huh. And so I, I did that. And of course, when I was in college, I was a terrible student. I was an awful student. I was not focused. I was not disciplined. All I wanted to do was hit tennis balls at that. So this time around, as you can tell by my resume that I sent you, yes. I, I've got the I've got the cards on this one. Okay. Yes. So so I took the three courses at Blue Ridge, made A's in all of them. Great. No, no issues there. But then I had to take three at High Point to finish. Now, prior prior to that. I had to work with the university to find out which courses I had to take to finish. And it wasn't that many. I just had three, three that I needed to take there. And, and there's a fourth one and it was a algebra two and trig kind of course or something. And I, I said, that's going to be a deal breaker. That, that's going to be a deal. I, I, I do not want to do this. I'll have, I'll have to spend two years taking math just to get to this course to finish. And I said, no way. So I called the, I guess it was the, I guess it was the registrar or, or the assistant dean or somebody and had a long conversation. I said, here's what I want to do. Here's what's blocking the pathway. I said, waive the math requirement and we have a deal. <laughs> if not, this is never going to happen. So a couple of days later, I said, well, let me, let me, let me, let me think about it. So he called me a few days later. And he said, well, we're going to waive the math requirement. Wow. So I had to take a, uh, 
uh, I think I had to take some sort of uh, global studies course. I had to take some sort of uh, technology course. And then I had um, a course in English, which was my, uh, my uh, major. So the problem was that all these courses fell in a non-traditional semester, right smack in the middle of summer where I am up to my eyeballs in lessons. In teaching, right, making the, the big income in the summer. Exactly. So, so I says, so I had to read and study nonstop, almost literally around the clock for about 40 days. That's all I had to do with this. And I, I did not only those two other courses, but I read, I think it was seven novels and, and three textbooks to get to, get to the end. In 40 days. In 40 days. And 40 nights. And, yes. And nights. Yeah, go ahead and add that. He, he, didn't get, he didn't get 40 winks in those 40 days. <laughs> no. no. People, people would come to visit, and I'd like, oh, nice to see you, nice to see you, and then kind of push them out the door and go yeah. back and start reading again. Yeah. Um, but I, uh, the good news is I, I walked with the class of 2010. I love that yeah. photo of you, uh, yeah. you know, a middle-aged man walking with the, all those kids and yeah. getting a degree conferred now, upon him. Now the photo, the photo I did not send you uh -huh. was our commencement speaker, who was Lance Armstrong. Wow. Oh, you kind of lived that down. So I have to kind of, you know, you know, in High Point does their, their highlight reels of commencements coming up. They always leave him out. They kind of <laughs> they put him do. down there. They I do. think Bill Cosby's in there. He's in there. A couple others. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, you could try. It they, yeah. be good. they were popular at, at the time. I'm mean, sure that exactly. wasn't. They, they, yeah. they just chose a different right. pathway themselves. It wasn't yeah. successful. But, that's but a, it, was a, it, yeah. it was a great victory. Yeah, it was good. Uh, that, All good. I bet you the, the kids were sitting there going, hey, Grandpa, what are you doing here? You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, he's can, a, can, I, can I lift that diploma for you? you <laughs> he must be some uh, alum. He's, he's representing somebody. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you need, need some help up the stage? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, Lane, thanks for giving us a, a fun first yeah. set there and relating the stories yeah. about tennis and graduating. Is that 30 years after you uh, you were going to graduate? Care, care, careful. Care, yeah, right <laughs> somewhere. In, somewhere right in there, yeah. A couple yeah. of days. A few decades. Let's put it that Tremendous. I'm still, I'm still amazed that you got that, that math class waived. You negotiated yeah. that out. I was, yeah, I thought, oh, I thought yeah. maybe they'll give you a second degree in negotiation or something. Yeah, maybe I should do that. Yeah. That was a good. That was that was a coup. That was really good play there. But then they said, okay, if you're going to do this, then you're going to have. If we're going to do this, you're going to have to do this. And so yeah. they they made it. But that's that was definitely so, math. So, was, the, so the donation envelopes keep coming in the mail. And that's I right. Keep, you know, keep sending them up. Yeah, so. I like it. <laughs> yeah. No, well, Craig, sure. um, any background questions from uh, from our fans, or uh, should we go to set two? Well, we we can. Add, this is kind of a fun one. This oh is yeah, from Coach uh, Johnson, Dick Johnson, up in Albuquerque. DJ, watching. oh yeah. He says to oh, say yeah. hi. He says, "Are we going back to Melbourne for the Australian Open?" He wants to know if you're. Oh, I'd love to. I'd love to. And he was a great. He was great to go with. He was a great guy. And uh, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely go back again. Yeah, I know he would. Well, we'll get to some more of those, those fun questions in the third set. We've also got – this is kind of a second set question. It says, uh, Dan Beadle says he's, he's learned a lot from you over the years. What are your yeah. thoughts on the most important area for club pros to improve their knowledge for the future? So this is kind of an educational question. Yes. So then we, since you were at High Point – you know, this is kind well, of yeah. We, you better want me to do it now. Yeah, well, I, I'd like to do it now because I want yeah. that. Basically, okay. that's such a great intro to our second set. Uh, and if I may, I, I want to mention that uh, the man we're we're talking with tonight, Lane Evans, was way early on the current trend of being director of not just tennis but racket sports or fitness and wellness and racket sports or tennis and golf. This guy's been doing this for many, many years, and hopefully that's a good platform for you to answer Dan's question. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it's a great question. I heard somebody uh, uh, not too long ago on, a, on a, another podcast or uh -huh. something that was listening to some sort of inspirational thing. They said, um, you know, you can only connect the dots going backwards. You can't connect the dots going forward. And so that, that kind of uh, – with that kind of thought process in mind, I think a lot of pros don't – really see their futures very well. They, they only look short distances out. Um, and that's, that's a little bit problematic. Um, mine, and I, I'm not saying that I was, had some kind of crystal ball or anything, 
But I think my my situations, my different job situations, made me think differently. Um, if there's such thing as a, a master of, of reinvention, that, that's probably where I am. Because I've had to reinvent myself several different times. You know, I, 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 I did it when I went into management uh, as a tennis pro into club management. I, I learned more about fitness as a club manager, but I never, never, never participated in any of it. I was managing it. I mean, I thought fitness trainers showed up, you know, just the fitness fairy dropped them off and this is what we did. Um, so then once I, I went to, to Champion Hills in North Carolina, I had to do it myself. Not only did I have to, to, to learn and, and educate myself in fitness, I had to learn how to build a fitness center. I think this I talked is, about it when I was in Texas. Yeah, in fact, well, when I met you, you had gotten pre-core, all the machines, you had gotten certified to fix them, not just a technician. install yeah. them and use them. So obviously you saved a few bucks in fixing yeah. those things and maintaining yeah. them, but you became an expert in that field. And if I recall, you were teaching others to do that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's, it's, it's um, you know, again, the situations just kind of called for it. And if I didn't know how to do it, you just have to learn how to do it. And then you then you move forward, you just chip them off one at a time. And um, I mean, I, I sent you that information earlier. You can see, I chipped a lot of stuff off. Yeah. I mean, a lot of different things. I'm still doing it too. You are. So yeah, I, to answer Dan's question, um, and and Dan's a, Dan's a smart guy. He He's a forward thinker. Definitely. And, and so he knows what I'm talking about. His situation, his, his work situations have changed several times already in his young career. And every time he goes somewhere, he's going to learn something new that he's going to push, keep pushing, keep pushing forward. And by the, by the end of it, he's going to know everything. Tremendous. Um, Lane, tell us a little bit about your current projects. And then the follow-up will be, tell us about your future projects. Wow. Um, well, I've got, um, you know, I've got some, some hype, I've got one high performance golfer that's going to try to qualify for the U.S. Open. Wow! And I work with him a couple times a week. I've got another another golfer that uh, just that a lot of them just train for golf, and so I, I do that. Those are mostly early morning thing. And then I go to my day job, and this is what I was going to kind of tell you about. That's where you are now, right? I'm in, I'm in my home office. Oh, your home office, home. yeah. And uh, but the the business that my wife and I pretty much run is. Um, an accident reconstruction business. So we reconstruct motor vehicle crashes. And I actually had to go to school to do that as well. So I, I, I've i been through most of the schools that, that most of your police officers and highway patrolmen have to go through. So I've gone through that over the last couple, several years, actually yes. a couple of years, and continue to learn. I mean, I, um, Oh goodness! I'm a Bosch, you know, CDR technician. So you know, all your vehicles have, um, but you, you call them black boxes, yeah. but they're actually little um, airbag control modules. And big trucks have ECMs and ECUs, and we we get trained in how to get the data out of those out of things. Take for example, Tiger Woods' recent wreck. So when he had that wreck, they went into that car and 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 uh, imaged the, the ACM in it that triggers all the airbags to go off. And all that data comes out in a big, big, long report. And so they know exactly what the vehicle did as it was coming down that hill. They know it's, how fast it was going. They know it's, it's, it's left and right movement. Mm -hmm. They know if he had a seatbelt on. They know when he put the brakes on and, and on and on. So that's been an interesting journey. That's, I don't really talk a lot about that because it's got, it's, it's got a lot of moving parts to it. And most of it's not, not great for party conversation. No, but, so I'm sure some of it is even downright morbid. Uh, it is. Car accidents, it is. yeah. It is. Hey, your clients are are they lawyers or attorneys? Uh, I'm sorry, um, uh, sort of uh, district attorneys, prosecutors. No, no, you're, right. you're right. They're they're attorneys, um, big insurance firms. Uh, insurance side, um, yeah. Yeah, um, and we get you know, wrecks never stop happening. Uh, so you know, we, we actually got a wreck from the one down in Fort Worth that had 130 cars. Yeah, in. yeah that was a big yeah, one. We during... got one from that. Wow. Yeah. So. It's, it's interesting work. It, it, it's challenging. And ironically, it is full of math. 
It really yeah. is. Full of math. That's all I do all day long is math. Crunch them. So, so this is payback. This is this is the payback. <laughs> the car was going yeah. 100 miles an hour in mm-hmm. one direction. This one was going 50 miles an hour. Exactly. One of those kind of, and you're sitting there going, wait a minute, 100 miles an yeah. hour, 50 miles an hour. And when did that's, they intersect? By the way, that's 150 mile an hour closing speed. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Closing speed. Ouch. <laughs> and so when I get done in the afternoon, I go uh, to the club. That's where I had been. So I go to the club. I've got lessons usually starting at four, uh-huh. five, six, and uh, one of them at seven. And then um, on Tuesdays, I go to First Serve. First Serve in, in Oklahoma City. Uh, Craig knows those guys. Yeah. Uh-huh. And work with those guys on Tuesdays. So, Yeah, and that's, that's what Coach Johnson wanted to see. Can you talk a little bit more about the First Serve, just a little bit yes. more in detail? Tell us about yeah. First Serve. Great, great organization. Um, Emmy, Emmy Tigert and uh, – Tony Mulligan uh, really run that here in Oklahoma City. You know, Phil Lancaster, you, I know you had him on a while back. Yep. Phil's a, a big uh, advocate of, of first serve. But I know he contributes a ton. He's even come out on the court with me. You know, we've, we've done clinics together, uh, which is really special because he's a neat guy. Definitely. Um, but the kids are, are, are great. They, they, we've got all, all areas, red ball, green, yellow. I mean, uh, the whole, whole bit. Um, summer camps. Uh, go on as well, and 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 these kids could not be more appreciative, more respectful. Um, it's a great outlet for them, and um, and some of them are doing quite well. They come, they progress from red ball up through yellow ball, and they're winning tournaments. They've gone from you know L sevens down to L threes and fours. So they're tremendous. Yeah, tremendous. And, and grow up. Do you go down there to Oklahoma City to uh, to help with those clinics? Yeah, and it's a you know that it, it's 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 a challenge, but it's, it's worth doing. Cause I come all the way from more uh-huh. all the way that way at rush hour to get up, get up there and, 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 and play with them. But, uh, you know, it's, it's well worth the trip. Well worth the trip. Yeah. then find them at first serve type in first serve foundation, Oklahoma city. You probably pop up. If, you, yeah, if people yeah. want to um, get some information. You know, they, Greg, you know, this, um, the, um, the tennis center at Oklahoma city, they just built a new pro shop. All that's completed now. And so the, the, the old pro shop will now go to first serve. So now they'll have office, you know, office and space and uh, areas to, to do their programming up, up there as well. So and that, it's good to see them uh, making some space for them. That foundation, less than 15 years old, maybe 10 years old. It's not, it's you know, not that not old. Sure. Think it's, it's not, it's not that old, um, but they, they, they've done quite a bit. Yeah, they've been. I think you, you came to one of the auctions. Did yes. One, one of the auctions mm-hmm. you came to? Yeah. I did, a couple of years ago. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. really nice. Uh, I'm trying to think who was speaking. Uh, was it Nick Bolletieri? They've had yeah, Nick. Nick's, Bo- Nick's been here. Yeah. yeah. Nick's been here. Yeah. It might have been Nick. And then there's yeah. there, there's maybe Lindsey Davenport. I've been to yeah. two of them, I think. Yeah. Through our good friend here. Carolyn Nimmo. You remember Carolyn yeah, Nimmo? They were here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I th- I've been to a couple of them. And that's that's an impressive facility, and that's where yeah. I played high school tennis. That's that was uh-huh. Putnam I City's know. home yeah. courts. There, <laughs> it looks a lot different. It looks really nice. I mean, they've done a nice job on it. The tennis really center nice is job. is really uh, it, it's a special place. Uh, not that it always wasn't, but yeah. they just needed a little TLC, and yeah. they put yeah. a lot Rich of TLC. Rich and Steve do a great job there. Oh, yeah. good, good. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's a very nice place. If anybody's in the Oklahoma City area wants to play tennis, that that's kind of the place to hang out right now. We just had the state. We just had the state tournament there too this this past weekend, so that was yeah. fun. Was that girls' state okay. or boys' state? Uh, girls. We had we had the girls there this past weekend. Yeah, yeah we had two. I'm actually, assistant coach at Moore High School too. Mm-hmm. So I had two players. We had two players that made it to the state tournament. Who ended up winning the girls? Do you know offhand? I don't know. I, I guess they did it today. Okay, uh, Sunday. Yeah, I was. Gonna... I got to move on. I got. I got to move to the next thing. I can't. can't <laughs> yeah, yeah. Place. Well, I, I, my my second school is is Ada because I've come up and helped out the Ada team. That's where the Chickasaw mm-hmm. Nation headquarters out of. And uh, so the Ada Cougars. Hopefully they'll they they've been been on a dominant streak. They've won about twenty four state titles in about the wow. last thirty years. They've been been really uh, on a roll. Some of the kids do go through the first serve and then some some. Uh, like I said, I've see, seen them. So that's why I was asking when you said, I yeah. think this weekend, this past weekend, that was Girl State, and then Boy State, I think, is the next. So I better call Carol. I better call Carol and see, see uh, who's in, who's who's coming up. So uh, I'll be. Uh, <laughs> I, need, I need to get my cougar hat on. So there you go. Uh, Putnam City doesn't have a, a team anymore. Hardly. Oh, We're not sad. not cheering for them much. You know, sad, unfortunately. Sad. But but anyway, so first serve the the foundation is is doing unbelievable work. Anybody wants to kind of check Great out, stuff. you know, even. 
open up something like that in their communities, they can look at First Serve Tennis, Oklahoma City, and I'm sure they can read all the, the great things yep. that are going on about uh, uh, the First Serve Foundation. So thanks. That was Coach DJ. That was uh, good. Good question there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've got a good one here from our friend Nick Smith. Uh, where do you see the trend, Lane? Where are you seeing the trend of future tennis training going? And if you'd like, you can relate that to some of these pro golfers that you're training with also. Oh, yeah. And uh, what are some significant details to getting better, in your opinion, uh, physically and uh, tactically? And then maybe we can drift into talking about racket fit, too. Yeah, um, you know, t- t- tennis is uh, – all about fitness. It, it's all about fitness. You know, I, the, the days of just uh, kind of standing in one place and hit balls, that those days are gone. And, um, you know, I work with kids from, I've had them as young as five. I had, actually had a four-year-old not too long ago. Oh, wow. Um, I had a six-year-old today. And, and you know, it, it's it's really all about movement, especially the high school players. I, I, I was noticing out uh, at the state tournament this weekend that, um, it's, it's, it's not kind of, it's not like it used to be. It, it's not like it used to be. I mean, we didn't really have high tech fitness. We just ran everything down and, and now, um, they've got all the, they've got all these tools available to them, but the high schools, you know, that's one thing, you know, reason why I, I, I help more high school out and we'll get into more of this, but, um, uh, we have, we've had, I've had some academies that have done this. But we do a lot of we do a lot of band work. We do a lot of med ball work. We do you know we do a lot of lateral movement, short um, accelerating uh, type movements. Um, we talk about acceleration. We talk about deceleration, uh, the ability to control your body in space. Um, all of that is really really important. Um, shot making abilities all depend on positioning, and if the positioning's not there then the shots aren't there. Right. And that, that, that comes from just doing the work and, uh, you know, moving your feet. And that's, that's what that's about. Um, I know, obviously, there's not a lot of movement in golf, but similar answers, or what are some of the tools you know you're what? using? I, I do a lot of cardio work with my golfers. Nice. Especially, especially the uh, – I do a lot of balance, a lot of stability, flexibility, range of motion. Um I'm, I'm using a, a, a protocol with him from Super Speed Golf. I don't know if you're familiar with Super Speed Golf. Um, Michael Napoleon uh, runs that, uh, has started that, and a lot of the tour players are using it. And the premise is that they use a series of weighted clubs, mm-hmm. a light, a medium, and a heavier club. And we work for swing speed. That's all we do. So we've got different protocols of, of how they're going to swing the club. There's things like uh, double step and step change, and there's even a happy Gilmore movement. You know, but – but the bottom line is they're swinging the club as, as hard as they can mm-hmm. on both sides. The, the key is really being able to swing the dominant side and the non-dominant side. And the resulting of that is that they're, they're much better balanced. They're, they're stronger. They're more accurate. Um, and I keep data on all of this. So I, I know over time, like my, my golfer that's getting ready to qualify the Open, I've been with him for a couple of years now. And I've probably gotten his swing speed up 10 10, 11 miles an hour. And so and he's, he's 52. And so, um, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled with where he is and, and we, we, we we'll hope he does well. Does, does a mile per hour equal how, how much distance? So like 10 miles per hour, would that not, be 10 yards, maybe five not, yards? Not, not really, not really. You've got, you've got club head speed and you've got ball speed. Sure. Um, a lot of, a lot of it really depends on mechanics. Um, you know, uh, and, and, and really your flexibility and range of motion, how you, how you approach swinging the club. Um, you know, like TPI says, you know, there's no one way to swing a golf club. You know, you two, if you play golf, you're not going to swing the club the same way. And that's okay. You, but you have to learn how to swing it the most efficient and effective way within your own body mechanics and, and abilities. Um, and that's, that's kind of how, how I approach it. And that, that seems to be a good formula. Can, can you help? So we Charles? do strength training. We do everything. Can you help Charles Barkley? No. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> Hank Haney couldn't help him. No one can help Charles Barkley. You know, in a way, that's kind of a funny version of the more technical question I wanted to ask is, you know, you've mentioned movement, you've mentioned strength and balance, uh, both side cross uh, dominance. Um, tell us a little bit about the the growing trend in uh, in training flexibility in athletes, not just for performance but also recovery. Tell us what you're doing for that. You know. Um, one of the protocols I use with, with, with my golfers, I use it with tennis players, too, is TRX training. Yes, TRX. I don't know if you're familiar with Yeah, with TRX love training. the straps. Yeah, that's yeah. that's helped me a lot. And, and there's, you know, it's kind of a funny story. When I got my certification in TRX, um, I was in Charlotte, and I had to go to a YMCA to do it. Uh-huh. And it started at, like, 8 o'clock in the morning, and it wasn't over until almost 8 o'clock at night. I mean, this was a full day. So it was my – this was only, I don't know, maybe – five, six years ago, maybe it was myself, one other guy and about 25 hard body, 18 to 23 year old women. So you can imagine what a clown show that was. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to help them put, get, had to help me put my legs in the, in the stirrups and hold them. It was, it was, it was embarrassing, but I got through it. It sounds like your college graduation, really. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Everybody's 18 yeah. to 23. Are there any pictures? No, no thankfully no. <laughs> only only in the emergency room after with me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, you mentioned a few kids from First Serve who are playing L7s, 6s, 5s, and even up to level 2 and 3. Um, how are you working with them, and what do you see as the step for them to get to those L2s, L1s, and maybe even some college tennis? You know, it, it's funny. I, you know, this 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 weekend at state tournament, yeah, um, I had the opportunity to to on to be able to go on the court and coach players, and it's really interesting to do that. Um, I try to talk to my players, regardless of of what age they are, and it's probably a fault of mine, but I I I I treat them very respectfully. <clears throat> but I probably treat them older than they are. I see. So, like for example, today I had an eleven-year-old that I work with, and I'm and when he started, he he couldn't get two balls over the net, and now he and I are, are rallying. He can rally with you. Forth. Yeah, I mean he's, we're going back and forth, and he's serving balls, and we're playing out points. I talk to him like he's ten years older than he is. You know, I'm telling him how to do things that I would tell you know a college player how to do, and and so it's it's interesting. And then I have older players who I have to talk to like they're 10 years younger. Uh-huh, than I yeah. So it, 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 it's, it's, um, it's an interesting dynamic. Um, but I, I, I push them. I, I push them as, as hard as I think I can. Um, you know, one of the things that I'm, I'm real careful about, I'm real good with is making sure parents know exactly what I'm doing. Yes. I, I want them to understand exactly the approach that I take with kids. Um, because you know, I've said this to many parents and I've said it to many tennis pros. No one's going to see their children the way that they see their children. No, they're never, we're never going to line up there. So you just have to kind of negotiate it and work with them as best you can and educate them and make sure they understand where you're coming from. I'm not going to stand out of the court and bark at a little kid no. about doing this or doing that. That's just not my style. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to talk to them like they understand everything I'm saying. And if they give me a look like they don't understand, I'm going to I'm gonna make sure they do. I go up and say, do you understand? You're, you're making a face. Are you okay? Yeah. You're not going to throw yeah. up anything. Are you? You, you get this, okay? And they say yes, and then we move on. Lane, I, I especially love that you included the piece about communicating so well with parents. Um, so when you don't dumb something down, they get why you're pushing this kid. And you're also not dumping, uh, dumbing something down for somebody in you know, age 50, 60, 70. And if you're pushing them without communicating, maybe they get the wrong message. But here you are with, with both ends of this, and it's clearly a, uh, a successful strategy for you. Yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's sort of an art form, I think. It, yeah. You really have to walk a thin, tight rope, you know, pushing, having fun, learning. Mm. And you kind of work those three avenues right back and forth. And, and it, it, I, I, 
I've been doing it a long time, so I've got some aptitude. For it. I can feel it. I can love, I love yeah. it. You know, I was just thinking that yeah. you're such an OU fan. Have, have the OU coaches ever talked to you? I mean, I mean seriously. I you mean, know, I, Lincoln I, Riley calls me all the time. <laughs> I, just, I, I just tell Lori, I said, Lori, if yeah. Lincoln calls, tell him I'm busy. Busy. Just, you don't, don't want to talk to right him. Now. Right. No, so, I'm, I'm, I'm still like Coach Kroll, the men's tennis pro- Nick, uh, right. Yeah, Nick Kroll. And then, I, I see Nick. I see yeah. Nick and Audra. I see him at matches. I go by there. And Donna Johnson is a good, dear friend of mine. She runs the OU Tennis Center. Right. And, I mean, uh, yeah, Tennis Center. And, um, you know, we love our OU anything here. We love tennis. We love volleyball. We love basketball. You know, we just got through doing gymnastics. Had softball today. Wow. Nine straight uh, championships, uh, Big 12 championships in softball. But, um, and then our national championship is coming next year in football. So we're, we're excited about that. But, do, I mean, I'm serious. Does, like, Coach Kroll or Coach Cohen, do they ever, you know, tap your knowledge? You know, you know they, they they don't. I mean, okay. they've they've got everything they need there. Sure. I think. Well, um, I don't know. I, I wish they I wish they would, um, because uh, you know we go to matches and I watch players play, yeah. and they make the same mistakes that my eleven year olds make. You know, they in a different kind of form, but yeah. they still make them. Um, and it, and he would tell you the same thing. It's all about speed, you know, movement, positioning. On and on, uh, both of them would tell you the same thing. The best, the best athletes make the best tennis players, and and you, you put talent on top of a great athlete, and you you've got you've got a great recipe there. That, that works. So is, is that is that, so? Just going down that rabbit hole even further, do you think that's why? Uh, this because women we're doing pretty well right now. Men's tennis, let's say, our athletes aren't quite what they used to be. Possibly is John McEnroe. And Jimmy Conger, were they better athletes? Maybe and Andre Agassi, Pete Sampras, and the current crew, uh, current well, group I think, of players. Yeah, maybe? I mean, it's a great question. Um, you know, you know, McEnroe played soccer, I believe. He was a, he was mm-hmm. a pretty good soccer player. Yeah. And, um, and and you know, you can just you know when I watch college players play, um, I can spot the talent. I can spot. You know, I, I'm uh, uh, with the IPTA. I'm a master tennis performance specialist as well. So I understand what it's supposed to look like. And so when I go watch college players play, um, I, I, I can pick the meat off of those bones. I, I just can. It, it's, it's easy to spot. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, for some reason, you know, I think the, the girls are a little bit worse than the guys are. But um, they hit a lot of balls above their shoulders. And I've never quite understood that. They, 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 they get everything on the rise. I yeah. get it. You know, it's all about... Time and distance, I, I get all that. But when they're up here hitting balls way up above their shoulder, just slinging away, I, I can't see that as a great recipe for, for long-term health in your shoulder. One of the things uh, I yes. sometimes I sometimes laugh at is, uh, you know, they get down and get low, and there's more stability when you're low. But sometimes they're squatting and reaching above the shoulder, and I think that's one of those weird disconnects. And that leads into a question I had about racket fit. Uh, I love uh, Dr. Drake and uh, and Dr. Yeah. Dre and Drake, but especially Sean Drake. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and tell us uh, tell us your experience with racket fit and how that's helped your career. Yeah, Racket Fit was a great experience. I actually helped um, write the curriculum for that. You did, and you know, I, so I've known uh, Greg and and, and uh, Sean a long time uh, during this process. Yeah. Of course, Greg on the more on the golf side, right? And Sean more on the tennis side. But um, I remember having a, I remember having a phone conversation with the two of them as we began to develop the curriculum for Racket Fit, and I remember I had to pull the car. I pulled. The, I was driving somewhere. I don't know where I was going, but I had to pull over in this kind of truck stop place. Uh-huh. And I stayed there for well over an hour. Right. I mean, like an hour, hour and a half or so. We're, we're talking about this. Uh-huh. And we never got above the ankle. We never got above the ankle. It was just, I was trying to explain to them the positioning and, and how we would, would set things up. Yes. And, and Greg is such a detail guy. Oh, yeah. And, 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 it, and it shows on everything he does. It, it, it's just really remarkable. Um, he, he's smart as a whip. And, and really understands golf performance, and, and, and the same thing with with, with uh, Sean. Um, they're just excellent, excellent uh, minds when it comes to uh, uh, body mechanics, biomechanics, and and movement, and efficient movement. Um, so once we started this, um, and then you then you incorporate um, uh, assaults and steam and a Kovacs in that mix. Um, 
then then you've got some of the best information in the world. Folks at home, that. we're talking about Mark Kovacs, uh, yeah. Dr. Um, uh, Jeff Saltzenstein. Jeff, who played at Stanford uh, yeah. in the era that I was out in California also. And uh, yeah. uh, Jeff uh, has the distinction of being top 100 after the age of 30. And I remember him as a fairly thin five foot ten and a half kid. And he was well, a he's, solid he's six like one. He's still, he's like still pretty thin, but yeah. he became <laughs> a solid just over six feet and 130 mile an hour serve when he was in the on the tour. And, and how he did probably he do, still hit it that fast? I bet he still could. Yeah, yeah. 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 Salzy, it's, it? it's amazing, right? Although this guy is a lot older than Salzenstein and hits 130 mile an hour serve. There you go. <laughs> this yeah. guy's unreal. On a mountain downhill <laughs> with a 30 mile an hour wind tailwind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe 120. Right. Yeah, indoors or something, yeah. Right. There you go. Yeah. Well, gosh, Lane, great second set. Uh, Craig Bell, any questions from our second setters? Uh, one question, and, and oh, good. I think that, uh, uh, okay, well, there's two, actually, two. Oh, good. I'll go to the top one first. Uh, what coaches do you feel have been the most beneficial for learning the modern game of tennis? Some Something like Oscar Wagner or just uh, any, any thoughts on the modern game? Well, it's interesting because I, I, of course, grew up in, in two different eras of, of the game itself. I mean, I was more of a linear player, and now you have more of an angular player, which creates a whole different uh, dynamic for, for right. strength and movement and, and uh, uh, you know, ro- rotational characteristics. Um, you know, when I teach beginners now, I still teach linear style. You, you, can't, you can't take a beginner player and, and really teach them how to hit with semi-western yeah. forehand they just yeah. they're not, they're not going to get it so you have to you know go back to basic mechanics i i do anyway and that seems to that seems to help um the kids who come along that already know how to play you know who already have picked up those those skills um it's it still comes back to um timing you know it comes back to movement footwork yes um stability um you know with my golfers it's kind of an interesting thing i i when I was at Champion Hills, there was a golf hole there, number seven, and it was a par three. And on the right side, it had this massive hill that was just this, this long hill that ran all the way down the, the hole. And so, and it and it and it originally had uh, uh, big, thick scrub grass on it. So if you hit a ball up there, it's most likely it would stay. So you know, this was a senior community. So these guys would go trekking up that hill. And I used to say, you know, balance is being able to go up that hill and find your ball. Stability is being able to hit that ball and not fall down the hill. So, yeah, that's 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 kind of what it is. Good way to um, express it. I love it. Balance I, and I think, stability. Yeah, I think most of the coaches, especially the tour coaches now, I, I've seen them at tour events and seen them working with their players. They're, they're all about um, – uh, they're doing band work and they're using, you know, rollers, foam rollers in their – um, for recovery and they're they're um, uh, they're doing those short bursts. They're using cones and even yeah. some use ladders. I'm not a big fan of ladders, but they they use they use ladders as well. Um, Often they combine things like while I am under stress or trying to be balanced, I'm also pulling a band, making a swing. So it's a compound effort, and yeah. and that really uh, that really allows us to hit a harder ball off center or off balance. I've got one drill that I do with my, my golfers where uh-huh. um, I'll put them on two stability discs, little round discs. Yeah, yeah, stand up two on. of them, yeah. Okay. So, so they're on two, two regular size you know, uh, stability discs, and then I've got two two-pound med balls that we'll throw back and forth, back and forth 30 times, uh, do three sets of that while they're standing on the stability disc. So that's, that's a, a real challenge for them, and they, they do it pretty well. And then I've got a med ball exercise where we use a bozu ball and a, and a stability disc. So it creates a high low, mm-hmm. low high. Love that high low, yeah. Dance. And then they're moving, they're moving, you know, six to eight pound ten ball med ball back and forth. Lane, uh, not to take too much time right now, but do send us a video every now and then. We'll feature you and your students on a training tool Tuesday this week. Yeah. Actually, for training tool Tuesday, one of the posts we have already uh, in the 
in the iPad or, you know, locked and loaded is what you just described with med balls, compound two things, and it's Casper Ruud and Stan Wawrinka. What about so Medi Bear? Got, yeah, Medi, we knew Med Ball. Med we bear. did once we did Medvedev, uh, Med Ball Meds Day or whatever it was. <laughs> so we'll do, we'll do Medvedev another day. That is a tall, skinny guy. I don't know how he does anything. And then yeah. you look at Ruud and Wawrinka, and they could probably throw a medicine ball from here, you know, out that window. Right. Yeah. Well, Lane, yeah. gosh, good stuff. Was there a second one, Coach? Yeah, there, there's one one more. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, well, actually, there's, there's a couple more here. Oh, yeah. Uh, How about this one? Yeah. Um, uh, athletes being faster and stronger, do you see the serve and volley coming back? Yeah, I mean, time and distance. That's gonna, that's, that's a, yeah, I, I do see it coming back. Um, staying on the baseline is, is just going to wear players out. It's, it's eventually just going to take its toll injury-wise. I, I really believe that. I think that the quicker, faster points you're going to get, you're going to get massive serves are going to go through the roof here. Um, the strength training, the, 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 the technology, the racket technology, right? It, strings it's going, to ma- going to make it crazy. And if you're not serving in volley, that that that's going to be problematic. You know, the biggest challenge I have with high school players um, and my my USTA league players is is how to volley. They 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 do not know how to volley, especially the girls. Um, they just simply don't get it. I, 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 I've come up with all sorts of little apparatus and, and cables and bands. And yeah, bands. Stop short of duct tape to make <laughs> them keep those racket heads up. But, um, yeah, I, I, I do. I, I think that's going to be a, a – I think that's going to be important for them to be able to volley. It's so funny you say that. And then on the positive side, when you do convey how to volley well and to use it as a weapon, it's such a game changer. And you mentioned sometimes the stereotype of, okay, a lot of young people can't volley and middle-aged people can. Some women can't. Some women can. The ones that can and can can close in off a decent approach, it's a massive weapon, and they're beating people. I'm talking about the Division I college level. You see an average uh, or slightly above average beating a girl who might who might have been a world class junior, she's losing because she doesn't volley as well as that hardworking kid right there who listened to right. coach, right? And you and you know this too, but mm-hmm. you know I I tell my players too, you know, the relative easy part is the volley part, is how to get from the baseline to the net transition up there. Part. Yeah, they they don't quite. I was telling I was telling somebody earlier today, you know, the high school players. They, they don't really understand yet how to recognize weakness and, and how to, how to um, uh, exploit weaknesses in order to buy time to get to the net. They don't know how to shape points really yet. It's, it's more of just a retrieval thing. I'll, I'll just keep it coming back, and you know if I hit one more ball than they do, I'll, I'll yeah. win the point, which is not a bad way to think about it. But um, it, it, I, I just wish there was a little bit more thought process in it where they could really strategically think it out and 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 look for weaknesses and they, and use their own strengths. You know, I've got players who have great backhands and I have great serves, but for some reason, you know, the other parts, the, the forehand and the volley, just can't, they, they they can't figure out how to work all the pieces together right. to 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 make it work. But right. uh, we keep we keep working with them and keep pounding on them and they they'll eventually get it. Is that because you think doubles has been de-emphasized that people don't? I mean, because that's, that's where I learned. I think learn a certain volley. Yeah. I, I hate oh, staying yeah. back. I, I'm not a, a person that wants to stay back and grind points out. So I was going to try to make people uncomfortable and use my my strength, which was my ability and agility around the net. And mm-hmm. I, I don't think that that people, you know, especially in college, high school, maybe it's, it's, it's really de-emphasized. I, I know that's just a thought. Do you, do you think that that's yeah. part of it also, too? Oh, I, I do. I, a good example is my uh, my four or five USTA lady. I mean, they uh, they would sit back on the baseline, you know, one back, one up all day long. If I'd let them do it, we do we do an hour and a half drill. We do it twice a week, mm-hmm. and no one sits on the baseline. No one goes to the baseline. We never even go near the baseline. Everything is is net centric. We're we're coming in. We're we're hitting. We're starting at the surface line, and we're coming in. We've got volleyers. Um, I'll serve, I'll serve, and and then everybody has to come forward. Uh, that's the deal. Has and it, so we don't we don't even stay on the baseline. So, so you've yes, been there, volley, you, volley is very important. So you've been there a couple of years. Is it helping? Do you see do you see that? Oh yeah, yeah. Overall, okay. 
Oh, you know, yeah. People aren't wanting to spit the bit, are they? Are the ladies looking at you like, oh, come on, Lane, I'm paying for this, you know? And, no, no? no. Okay, so they bought they it. I don't, I don't think they've lost a match yet. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, I don't think they've lost a match. Yeah, this year, this year they haven't lost. Uh, won the last two, three last year, and they haven't lost this year yet. So, yeah, I'm, I, I think it works pretty well. I think they think it works pretty well, too. I'm, I'm glad they listened to you. They probably yeah. see all those skins on the wall, and they're like, "All right, we're gonna we're gonna okay. buy into what Lane's talking about." I like it. I hope yeah. so. I hope. Well, CB, at, at least until they start losing. Yeah, that's. Oh, <laughs> when they start no. losing, then they're gonna go. That Lane Evans, yeah. don't go to him. Head, yeah, we're headlines gonna... today. Fish rapper tomorrow. That's right. <laughs> oh, no. yeah. Then they're gonna yeah. they're gonna ask for a drill that has them behind the baseline right. hitting lobs all day. Right, right. Because right. exactly. that because that gal Sally can't hit an overhead. <laughs> yeah, we got a lob. Yeah. You know? That's right. Lane hasn't <laughs> yeah. taught Sally to hit the overhead yet. So I think that there should be well, more USPTA. Yeah. You. Know, uh, conferences based on what we actually deal with. And that's, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not doing high end juniors over here. I'm, you know, at the club yeah. behind me is ladies 3035 tennis. Yeah. And that's, you got a little 4045 yeah, like Lane is describing bit, also. Not, not a I, lot. I'll, I'll tell you though, one of the, one of the areas that I, I really paid a lot of attention to, and I really did it back in North Carolina was when we were at the, at, when was at the club there, is the 2 5 player. The 2 5, two five player. When you're talking tri level and, and, and beginning players, I've got I've got uh, two ladies now that that have started with me, and now they're already playing league. They're already playing two five league. They're in. They just started, and um, uh, I've got a presentation that I've been been fine tuning called the case for the two five player, and that's 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 where we're going to define what how to work with a two five player. That's a and, fantastic uh, title. I'm going to book but, you at the next uh, conference yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. We, we need you. When I was when I was back in North Carolina, this is fun. This this is funny. We had, um, you know, I'd been there for I don't know five or six years, and we finally decided because when I got to Champion Hills, we had nothing. We had two cruddy courts, no players, and I said, you know, let's let's see what we can build. And so we we built a monster. We we just we just we we were just landlocked. We couldn't build more courts, but we built a monster of bunch of players. And so finally, after about the fifth or sixth year, I said, okay, let's let's try to do USTA league play. We got tri-level, so we'll, we'll try that. It was a new, just being introduced, we'll, we'll try that. So we did the 2 5 3 and the 3-5 tri-level. And I had full roster, 15 players. I had 15 plus. I had 20 players that wanted to play. And so to tell you how, how this was, all but two of the players, all but two of them, had no searchable records. They had no, no, no identity in the USTA. They weren't USTA members. They'd never played leagues, and and they, they played so long ago their records were gone. That there was nothing. So they all had to rejoin the USTA. They all had to you know do their league fees and do all that. All right. And I had to do it for them because invariably all all thirteen of the fifteen had computer problems that day. Of course <laughs> you know, they did. Course. No, my computer's not working right. No, I mean, I'm, it's on the on the on the fritz, I got I got need some help, so I had to stack of credit cards on my on my desk where yeah. I'm just like, okay, this is Betty, okay, this is Jane, yeah. and it was just just reeling them off, and I'll be dog if they did not first year, they went I think it was eleven and one, eleven and one, and actually won a playoff match, and then went to the to the state championship state. first time around. Well done, and, and that was just amazing. Now the funny thing is the next year. When, when we, we did the same thing again, played really well, got through it. Then we got down toward playoff time, and, and I had a couple of ladies come to me and say, well, why do I have to play with her? Uh -oh. I played with her last year. You know, why do I have to do that again? So so it wasn't good enough, good enough to, to win again. Now, they're, now they've got condition. I thought, I, I looked at Laura, I said, you know, they're probably going to come back with a shoe deal. They want a shoe deal now <laughs> or something. Right. Like, I said, okay. So... <laughs> So, so that, Lane, one set of problems it creates another set of that's problems. That's right. So Lane got on the phone with uh, Beaverton, Oregon, right. and got them all a Nike deal. Right. And here we are. Yeah, 2.5, the case for the 2.5 player. I'll never forget like that title. That. That's awesome. That, I think you're on to something. Because yeah. most of us work with people who are just ordinary players that just want to have yeah. fun. And that's I, I see a lot of our conferences designed and developing around other things that I don't really – 
do at the club. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm interested, but I'm not really interested, you know, if that makes sense. I, I, yeah. I, I'm more interested in, in, in listening to what you have to say and seeing the drills that you're doing and how you're developing those players that, yeah. that uh, want to just have fun. You want to just engage them in, in uh Give them just, they're like little birds. You're just trying to give them yeah. little bite-sized morsels. Well, and, then, and, you know, the thing is, you know, I said this a little bit earlier, is that how I treat, you know, juniors. Mm-hmm. Well, I kind of treat them the same way. I say, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to cut them a break. This is what we're doing today. Right. And, and, and you called me, you, you came to me. I didn't, I didn't go looking for you. So, you know, you, you, you're going to do this. And I know you can do it or I, I wouldn't try. If I didn't think you could do it, we wouldn't be doing it. And sure enough, these two, these two that I've got now, these two two fives that are, are playing league play, they're, they're, they're the best kind of crazy there is. They're, they're <laughs> chomping at the bit. Yeah. They went up to the, they went up to the country club, Gary's club, uh, the other night played, and uh, actually did very well, very well, first time out ever, and they're doing great. So they're they're on their way. All right, give way. us give us a nugget. Um, you are treating them like like very good players. What is something because you, you know you can't possibly work with them five six days a week like one would with a very high performance junior. Um, what are some nuggets that have made a difference for them? And feel free you can talk about physical, tactical, technical, uh, whatever you like. Well, I th- I think the way one is the way that I speak to them. You know, I speak to them like they they know the answers already. Yes. So so they they they're not going. They're not looking at me like I'm crazy. I say we do this all the time. You know what what this is supposed to look yes. like. Yes. So let's just do this, and 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 I I continuously, you know, shadow it in front of them. I show them what it looks like all the time, all the time, all the time. Always demonstrate show, and that and that seems to resonate. And then I have a lot of, you know, a, a, a lot of, not gimmicks, but but little anecdotes that I'll use. Like, for example, I carry um, maybe a half a dozen Frisbees in a bag underneath my underneath my, my basket. The teaching cart, so, yes. So we'll do that to work on backhands. Yeah. We'll set up targets, and we'll, we'll do it that way. Um, it, it helps them with the mechanics. Um, Probably helps them with the freedom, too, because yeah. uh, when you're working with a Frisbee, you can't help but smile and be free and enjoy it. And... Uh, Hopefully, you don't go back to hitting tennis balls like this. You you play a little more freely, a little more beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a I've got a group of beginners that I do on Wednesday night, and it's a it's a fun group. I've done them for probably a couple of years now, oh, wow. and and they're 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 getting they they enjoy. It. This is the group that really enjoys it. They come back and back and back, and whether they play a, a competitive match in their life, yeah. they could care less. Yeah. Now these two that I just described. They started there and quickly and quickly got out because they're they want to play competitive tennis. The best kind so of that's, crazy. That's fine. We, yeah. we'll take care of you over here. Right. But the rest of them, um, I've I've started uh, doing some live ball work with them. Let them go live ball, and they they love it. They would much rather do that than just have balls fed. Fed, them. yeah. So even though it's a it's kind of a train wreck sometimes, they <laughs> they love it, and, and that's the fastest way for them to learn is to do that. Um, they're they're no different than a bunch of five year olds. Which is which is great, which is great. So they're hitting balls and they're learning, and we we go over. I, I mean, I'm not I'm not I don't have my back turned to them, so I'm watching everything they do. Yes, and we're correcting things and telling them what they should have done, and, right. and and it works. So it's kind of it's kind of their on the job training. They're they're hitting live balls and they're learning at the same time. So, what a great way to learn! And speaking it, of training, my goodness, what a great second set! I've learned a lot on the job here, so thank you, Lane and Got Craig. It. I want to yeah. go three sets with this yeah. man. What's next? Well, can, can we ask you one quick question? Anything, quick. anything. Yeah. Where can people find you if they're in the Oklahoma City area and they, or they want to yeah. come see the secret sauce? What Lane Evans wants to uh, uh, explain to them? How, how can they West, get in touch with you? How, how can they? Get yeah, Westwood them? Tennis Center. They've got all my information there. That's in Norman. Okay, mm-hmm. um, I can be found. I can be found through there. And now they've got my cell phone and all, all that, so email address and all that. So okay, wonderful. Westwood Tennis Center. Just look up Lane Evans, and you can Westwood go. You can, you can go over there and get some secret sauce from Love from it. Lane. Right and there. we're talking about not just tennis, golf, fitness, right. anything, everything. Yeah. Yeah, horseshoeing. Yeah, I, yeah. I get Math. people that call me. They want to give them golf lessons, and I don't <laughs> teach golf. I train golfers. I have to kind of explain it to them because they don't they don't quite get that part. But I, I do want to come up on a data science and um, calculus two if possible. So I, I want to get on your schedule for Calc 2. <laughs> you know, in, in, in our in our other business, we have, um, I have books and books and books of formulas. <laughs> you formulas. do. But I also have computer programs that we can feed the data into. Excellent. And, and, it, and it, it tells me what happens. So Excellent. I, 
I, I rely on that quite a bit. I like it. Technology <laughs> is my friend. There. It's your friend now. It's not <laughs> it's your enemy anymore. Friend. I like it. Okay, yeah. can I can I go down one quick road? Oh, I love it. Yep. So USPTA, real quick. Yeah. Uh, before we get to the third set, wh- what are your thoughts on USPTA national board member? In anything that USPTA is looking to do, maybe in the future or currently, you think that? Well, that you know, might be we're, we're we're busy in a we're busy in a lot of different areas, but you know, primarily we're trying to uh, finish up the uh, education pathway, the tennis essentials one, two, and three, and and how young professionals are going to navigate their way through and into their tennis professional careers. Um, it's, 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 been a, it's been a challenge. I, I'll be honest with you, it's been a challenge. But, um, you know, John Embry has been a great leader through this thing. Faisal has, has done an outstanding job uh, of navigating this on, on, the, on, the, on the Florida end. Because remember, the board hasn't been, I haven't been to Florida oh. in a you know, the year and a half. Um, we're, we're talking about possibly meeting there in July, which, which would be a lot of fun. Um, to just you know to see people, I, I haven't you know, we haven't had any interaction at all. Most of it's been you know, all of it's been Zoom and and phone calls. Mm-hmm. Um, you know our DNI initiative, as you're part of, Greg uh, is, is is just gone great. You know it, it's been interesting when the, when the when the whole DNI thing came up. Um, I of course I'm in favor of it, but I never really paid a lot of attention to it. And, and that's not because I didn't care. It's just because I, I've never discriminated. I, I, the phone call I told you I got from the college player. Yes. He was, he was an African American. Right. I've got another African American player I went to college with. He calls me all the time. Talks to me all the time. And, um, you know, I, I don't. I, I just don't pay attention to that. That, I guess, the way I should. But none of it really matters. I mean, if any of that mattered, I wouldn't work with the kids at first serve. You know, I wouldn't work with half the people I, I work with. Um, and that's just that's not that's just not who I am. I, I just have never had a discriminatory bone in my body, and and I, I never will. And, and uh, but I I think it's important. Um, there 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 are a lot of injustices out there. Um, you know, one of the one of the ones that I, I personally have, have suffered from is age discrimination. You know, and that that actually led me to to you know to kind of uh, move to this job in Oklahoma. Because, you know, I was at a club that, that was, you know, it, it, we were done. I did everything. If, if such thing as working a job to the end, I did it. I, I worked it to the end. I was there 11 years. We went from no players to about 125 players. We built a fitness center. And not only we built it, we remodeled it three times. We just didn't build it big enough. Wow. And so the one, the one I finally left there and got, got it finished, it's, it's terrific. It's massive. But that's it. There, we're on the mountains. There's nowhere else to go. You can't, you can't just cut ports into hillsides. Yeah. Um, and so when I started looking to move, um, you know, no one, no one wants to hire a tennis pro that's, you know, 60 years old. Nobody wants to do that. Ken DeHart. Ken DeHart's the only pro I know. Who hired <laughs> right. You know, he's, a, right. he's 127 years old. He's still getting new jobs. Right. <laughs> don't know how he does it, but yeah. I, I don't know how he does it either. Right. Yeah. Um, that, that's but, uh, yeah. Good. It's a really good point. Uh, yeah. And and so I, I I'm, I'm sympathetic to that as as well as the rest. But um, to to, go, to get back to us, you know, there's there's plenty to do. There's plenty to do. I I think that one of the areas that that we really need to focus on, as you know, I'm an ambassador with uh, Tennis Thanks the Troops. Yes. And that's a, that's a that's a big big deal to me as well. Uh, that's an organization. Jean Plachet runs that. Um, she's her, her the spokesman for us, and. Um, you, you know they raise funds for uh, military family education, which is a, which is a, a terrific cause. Um, uh, you, you know, uh, sort of underprivileged kids or uh, needy kids on a national level is another area where I, I think that our organization could do a lot of a lot of good. Um, I know that all of our pros. I know that I, I know that Dick Johnson does first serve where he is. And, and I'm sure there's a lot more that goes on around the country. I would like to actually bring attention to more of that mm. um, inner city type work that, that our pros could really, really help. Yeah, those, those, are, those are some good good topics that, that uh, you know, especially that DNI. I, I've 
never been discriminated against. I don't yeah. think, other than maybe age. I don't know if I've been discriminated against. Yeah. I certainly you don't look, discriminate. You're pretty young, pal. Well, I'm, I know, I'm not but, worried but about still, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm interested. You know, when Lane said that, that uh, had thought about age discrimination. You, yeah. you mostly think of you know blacks, Asians, you know whomever you know those kind of folks and yeah you know, i i was kind of thinking about that too when i'm i'm ahead of the native american and task force. you yeah, and, yeah and, yeah. and i saw that email i'm so proud of the work you're already doing well, and you're just trying. getting started i don't know great. what, what yeah. i'm doing but i'm just sitting there thinking i there's got to be stories out there and i think there's what you just said is the key there are people doing a lot of good work out there they just need mm-hmm. to be recognized and acknowledged yeah. yes. for, for what's going on out there and they just haven't had yeah. those stories you know told that uh, you know we hear about all the great things that are easy that's low hanging fruit these are tough stories that that there's got to be people out there that that are doing really fantastic work that yep. never get get that recognition or those accolades you know, you know a lot of our pros I, I do it but a lot of our pros also uh, volunteer an enormous amount of time to high school tennis yes and you know some do it as, as really a job i i don't do it as a job i just do it as a as a, as a volunteer um but high school players are in desperate need of of good quality uh, teaching and, and training they don't they don't really have that in the school now um, now we've got a, a, a pretty good coach at, at Moore who's is pretty tennis savvy and, and does a pretty good job there um but it, it's uh I, I go to the when I went to the state tournament. I, I saw coaches that, you know, some of them are you know sixty pounds overweight, and I don't, I don't think they could hit two balls over the net. So I don't know. Maybe they know a lot about tennis. I, I don't know that answer. But um, you know, they need uh, any any and all training they can get at the high school level is, is going to be valuable to them. There's no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Good stuff, Lane. Yeah. Well, we're ready to get to the third set. Time for the third set, bud. Thank you, thank you, uh, Lane, for going down. No, good. Different... I'm enjoying it. No, no, this, is, this is awesome. So we we've already been. Uh, we'll we'll try to keep this pretty fast here in this last oh, last set. What here. you got to do? Oh, you want to go? Oh, we can go three hours. I've, I've got <laughs> I've, I've got you know even you know a couple of more pages even over here of things we can we can in... make this a five set match. Oh but, uh... <laughs> yes, maybe a seven set. Yeah. But all right, so this we're going to go three sets in the third set. Great, and this is a lot of fun. This is sponsored by Master Systems, our good buddy Blair Descore. If you need anything from resurfacing, like behind us, to actually court accessories, windscreens, anything, Blair's Blair's the man, right? AJ, I think he's the he's our man, uh, especially here in the local area. Blair can can uh, take care of all your products. I don't know if he goes to Oklahoma, but he might go up to. Speed. I bet he would can for we, for a guy like Lane. Yeah, he, he might go up yeah. there. So. Um, Blair D is the man. So you can look him up at mastersystems.com. All right. First band you saw in concert. Who did the Lane Evans see in concert first? You guys are going to laugh at me. Uh-oh. The Monkees and Jimmy Hendrix. Oh, my. Incredible. What, what a dude. What a combo. <laughs> that was in Greensboro, North Carolina. Oh, my Greensboro goodness. Greensboro Coliseum. What wow. an iconic duo that I wouldn't put together. One's <laughs> essentially a boy band uh, right. imitating the Beatles. Right. And Hendrix is a Hall of Which Fame. Open, uh, open for the Monkees. Yeah. Wow. He, wait, wait, wait a minute. Jimmy Hendrix open for the Monkees? Yep. No way. Incredible. You would think it's just the opposite. Uh, you know, if you, th- you look at their careers, the Monkees yep. were more popular at that time than Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> what year was that? Just out of curiosity, 60? Oh, it had to be in the uh, probably Eight. middle, late 66, six, 67, uh-huh. somewhere in there maybe. Yeah. No, they yeah, were somewhere in there. And they were fake musicians at one time. You know, they, they were just guys that, that couldn't play other than Pete, was it uh, Peter Tork? Tork? Or uh, Nesmith, Mike Nesmith. Mike, Mike Nesmith. He, he, was, he was the guy that was actually a decent yeah, you know, all the rest of them, Davy Jones and yeah, and Mickey Dolan's. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and Dolan's was more of an actor and a right. comic. He was hilarious. Yeah, they were just put together. Yeah, Lauren's telling me they're they're actually doing a, a farewell tour. Uh, Mickey and Mike will be doing it because the two other ones have passed away. Right. But, uh, yeah, they're going to start down in Texas. I think it is. I'm going. Oh, well, we have to That's see that. clearly one of my favorite TV shows. If you find shows. out where it is, we're going to go. We'll buy your tickets. Come on We're down. going. <laughs> the Monkees, man, that would be – I mean, I, I I just thought they were great. I remember watching that TV show. I love that TV show. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was awesome. All right, if you could hear a band – you st- I know you're, you're a concert guy. and You've been to a lot of concerts. If, is there a band that you would like to hear that you haven't heard? Maybe Coldplay. Oh, Interesting. Oh, yeah, that would be fun. Chris Martin and the guys, huh? Yeah. That guy's yeah. pretty talented. I, I like listening to his songs. He's got some interesting uh, uh, 
lyrics in his just the, his the way he his melodies mm. that that he plays. I think he's he's yeah. actually really good. That's that's a good one. Where'd you like to see? I like, where'd you like to I see? I like um, um, you know new uh, what do you uh, probably uh, is it new wave like violin like Vanessa May, mm. Lindsey Sterling, uh, music like that. You know them, AJ. AJ knows I, I, most. I know most, but I don't know the new violin. The violin, uh, uh, violinists. I, I haven't heard those. I got to look those up. Lynn May. Favorite yeah, band? Who's, you. who's your favorite band? Oh goodness! Or a couple of favorites. Uh, oh, I, I, I'd go old school. Probably, I would probably go back to uh, maybe Creedence and uh, mm-hmm. even the Beatles. Maybe, yeah. I know you're a big uh, Toby Keith fan too, Toby. right? Yeah, you know, we got Toby's here in uh, his restaurants here in Oklahoma City. Right. And, uh, he's a big OU fan, so we see him at a lot of football events we go to. And uh, he owns the club that, that my golfer I'm training to go to the Open, he he owns uh, uh, the club that he plays at. Oh, cool. Uh, so it's uh, really good. What, what's your favorite music? Do you, you, you like everything? You, you know, rock, jazz? I'm, yeah, I'm kind of all over the place. I'm kind of all over the place. I, it depends on what mood I'm in. I, I can listen to country or I can listen to, you know, soft soft music, uh, classical music even. Um, you know, 70s, 80s, I'm all over the place. So, so do you like the stuff when the kids, you know, that you teach, or they, they throw some stuff out on the old uh, uh, speaker? Do you listen to that? And you're yeah. going, I, I just look at them and go, yeah, I have all their albums. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, really? You know Drake? You know Rich the Kid? <laughs> and then they go, what's an album? <laughs> what's an album, sir? Yeah. Coach, what's, what's an, an album? Album. <laughs> right. album. A record, what's vinyl? What do they mean by vinyl? Yeah. Yeah. So. All right, so here's a really telling question. This is our last question in this, this set. Uh, if you're in a band, mm-hmm. right, which me- band member would you be? Would you be the lead singer, lead guitarist, bass player, keyboards, drummer? Where, where would Lane Evans drummer. be sitting? I'd be the drummer. No kidding. Drummer. I played drums when I was younger. Oh, you, you do? Yeah, I'm a, I love drums. Yeah. Ah, now, now let's go down that rabbit hole. I, yeah. I, I, drove, my, I drove my mother crazy. So, now, what, who's your, who are the people that you really like drummer, drumming-wise? Well, Ringo Starr is probably one of the best drummers ever. Uh, Gene Krupa was a great, yes. great drummer from the past. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, I, the, the, I mean, that's kind of what I grew up with. And, uh, so I, 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 mean, I took drum lessons and you know played snare, played. Uh, I really liked the the timpani too, and I, I never got a chance to to play that. Um, played sets, you know. My, my buddy uh, at High Point is we used to play in his washroom. His, his, his mom is, you set a space aside in the, in the washer dryer part of his garage, so we uh-huh. play in there and not make so much noise. But, uh, yeah, it was fun. Interesting. Did, uh, did you play the – did you have a trap set? Did you, you know, be able to left hand, right hand, right foot, left foot? You, yeah, I was pretty, I was, I was pretty good. I, I, was, I, could, I could go pretty much all the way around. I, I liked it. I, 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 again, you know, I used to really pay attention to, to bands when they were playing and to kind of watch the drummer. I still mm-hmm. do that. To kind of see how they how they work and uh, uh, so yeah, it was kind of fun. So is Ringo underrated? Do you think? Because Ringo, uh, I think he, he, he was so very, simple. I think he's very underrated. Because Under, very underrated, yeah. He was a great drummer, great drummer. Because probably I mean, still is. Played some just simple stuff, and that I think yeah. he got uh, caught up in the fact they said that he couldn't do things like a Gene Krupa, Buddy Rich, <laughs> even yeah. you know, in, in, yeah. that wasn't Ringo's. Yeah, Buddy Rich, because I knew when yeah. you said Gene Krupa, Buddy Rich. Yeah, Buddy yeah. Rich is oh, another. I love drummers, too. Yeah, I, yeah. I, mean, I, I wanted to be a drummer, but I ended up being a trumpet player because it looked easier to play the trumpet than than, than the drums. I was going to play the drums, but yeah, but I ended up playing the trumpet. I, I like music, and so. I could I could twirl my sticks, too. That was, oh, you could? Uh, you did? I think that was, that was the, uh, I guess that was the, the, the uh the show part of it, yeah, right. I, I like that part. Yeah, and did you, I twirl uh, my sticks better than I played. Your shirt off and have long hair, and were you sitting there hitting <laughs> the skins, you know, doing that? No. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to do that. Oh, okay. Yeah. North Carolina, you couldn't do that. But, Too proper. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Did you play in a band? Did you actually play in a band? No, not really. Just, yeah. just kind of played, hacked at it. It was, yeah. it was just fun. It's something I enjoyed doing. Did you do school, school music? Did were you yeah. in the band? Yeah, in school? I was, okay. played snare in school. Yeah, yeah, did all that. Marching band, and all that kind of stuff. No, I didn't do marching band. But just in just no. a regular band. I was, playing, I, was, I was playing sports. I couldn't play the band. Uh-huh. Didn't have time. Yeah, you had other yeah. things going. Yeah. All right. So first paid yeah. gig. What was your first paid gig? Did you have a newspaper route there in North Carolina, or do you? Uh, oh you man, yeah, I did. Um, I, I carried the Greensboro Daily News, 
and I had an arm. I, I could, <laughs> I had, you know, I had the sack and I had my bite, and and I, mm. I, would, I would just like a sword. I just pull it out on the fly and 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 fling it, and I could go probably I don't know, good 25, 30 yards, just bam. Porch after porch after porch. Love so, it. So did you did you have the like the diamond shape uh, design you know for newspapers at that time or did you just take just the full two, and put oh, the rubber band rubber band yeah two full yeah. rubber band off. I always thought that was pretty cool how they could make the little diamond. Diamond. I was like, man, that was cool. How did they do that? You know, <laughs> and those kids were sit there flick them out. My dad never let me do it paper route. He goes, yeah, four four thirty in the morning, four thirty five in the morning, right. getting papers. Yeah, we don't care what it looks like; just get it out there. <laughs> it's so funny because uh, so many of our guests who are highly accomplished like you have had jobs First early. Jobs. Yeah, a lot of them are maybe they're stringing or teaching or maybe they're tennis, but yeah. generally they're this. And it's probably why you have a good serve, That's right? Right, and it's probably right. why you still wake up at four thirty to go work out. Yeah, I. Uh, one of the, one of my first jobs, I, I think I had this job in college, a summer job. I tried to do it in the summer because I grew up in High Point, <clears throat> so that's the furniture capital of the world. Yeah. And we, so we had a lot of friends that were, were furniture, you know, people owned companies. And I, I, one of them gave me a job in the summer. Said, "Okay, you, you can work here." I said, "Wow, okay." I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to have a corner office and you know, put my feet <laughs> up and it's going to be great. This is in college, so I get there the first day and I'm in a warehouse, yeah, moving boxes of furniture parts, and so I'm. I'm, I'm just taking a you know a loader like a tow motor, right. driving around this thing and putting them up on shelves and taking them apart. And uh, I did that for maybe uh, about a week, and then I went back to teaching tennis. <laughs> <That's where I'm laughs> and, and it was probably uh, hot. I, on I the... saw I saw my future. I said, you there, saw you know, it. No, it's not there. It's here. I once had a warehouse job, and I thought, gosh, it is hotter in this warehouse than it is in the sun on the tennis court. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. terrible. Yeah, we, we had a comment from Rick Eckloff. Oh, how, good. How many drummers does, does it take to change a light bulb? Five. <laughs> One to uh, to change it. Four to say Neil Neil, Neil Perk could do it better. <laughs> from Rush, love it. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, dearly departed, and yes. uh, may he rest in beats. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, instead of peace, beats. Yeah. I like that. Favorite movie or TV show? What do you like? TV movies? Do you, do you, do you spend much yeah, time um, watching? Golly, we, we we were talking about this the other day. Oh, um, cool. We watched, uh, let's see, Dexter series. Remember the Dexter, Dexter series? Yes. Dexter, yeah. really like that. That was fun. Um, and it's coming back, too. And it's coming right. back. So you're um, are you a binge watcher? Will you sit down and watch, you know, like 15 episodes at one time? Um, Rarely. I, I just don't have that much time to, yeah. to do that. I'll, you know, Lori, we, we, we got the stuff piled up on the on the uh, DVR, and she yeah. gets after me about, about watching some of it and, I said, I will, I will, I will. And then the pile gets bigger and bigger. And, <laughs> and then finally she's, she watches it. And then we are having all these episodes. I watched them. You weren't going to watch them. So here we are. Here's where we are. Uh, uh, movies, yeah. Um, let's see. Patton. Patton is one Ooh, of my favorites. Military, yes. Yeah, Patton. Uh, older uh, movie, the D.I. You ever see the D.I.? Jack Webb and Don Dibbins? Oh. That's a great movie. No, Jack uh, Webb. That's an older one. I um, mean, funny movies, you know, movies like uh, Young Frankenstein, right. I like stuff like that. And, uh, Caddy, of course, Caddyshack and uh, um, Tin Cup, you know, just it's all over the place. Sports yeah. movies. I'm, I'm a Rudy guy. Rudy wasn't offsides, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rudy. So, yeah. yeah, all over the place. All right. Breakfast, all lunch, bre- breakfast, lunch, dinner. What, what do you, are you a breakfast guy, lunch guy, dinner guy? What do you? You know, I, I'm I'm the most boring eater in the world. Now. I, I in the morning I have either uh, yogurt with with uh, some granola on it or yogurt with with uh, raisin bran on it. Uh, that's it. And lunch, I rarely eat lunch. I have you know, probably more yogurt or something really light or shake. I eat a lot of shakes at lunchtime. And then um, you know, dinners. I don't I don't get home until you know seven seven thirty eight. Sometimes later. So it's usually something really light. Um, dinner is probably my favorite meal when I get to, when I get to eat them. We we go out, you know, we'll go out some places here in uh, Norman in Oklahoma City, and mm-hmm. we've got our favorite places. So yeah. What kind of uh, shakes are you having? You're such a lean, fit guy. Just, Tell us about what's protein, in the shakes: protein, and bananas, you know, powder bananas, and fruit. Strawberries, protein, gotcha. yeah, oh. just pure way, yeah, oh. um, and mix it with with a protein milk too, like Power Core or something like that. I see. Um, it's great. 
Great right. stuff. So now, speaking of dinner, we were talking about dinner here. All right, we're, this we always like to understand people's personality. So we know AJ and I, and Lori, will be invited to this soiree. I like to say the word soiree. <laughs> soiree is a good word. Party, soiree. Yeah, okay. you know, a little French from our Oklahoman buddy That's here. That's right. Yeah, we like to say soiree <laughs> north of the Red River. A little Francais. Yeah. yeah, we say, say soiree up there in Oklahoma City. Uh, yeah. Four people that you would invite to a, a little soiree, a little get-together at the, oh, the wow. Evans house. Wow. Any era. Any you can era, dig, yes. yeah. You can dig back centuries and millennia. And you can go forward. You, you can, can go, actually go forward. Yeah, you can go future, future. or Boy, history, ancient incredible. times, biblical, whatever you like. Wow. Um, probably some mo- probably some movie stars and athletes. Probably that's that's probably who I'd do that. You no, know, other than my mother, I'd be I'd always mm-hmm. put, yeah. put her in there. But sure. uh, on hey, day, it happens uh, to be Mother's Day too. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that too. Good. But uh, yeah, I think it'd be kind of neat to have uh, dinner with. Uh, and my wife would love to have Betty Davis or uh, Hudson or, or oh Rock Harry Hudson Grant yes. or you know somebody like that, and then uh, you know movie guys George C. Scott would be mm-hmm. a good one from Patton. Uh, yeah, and Patton at the same time. I was just thinking, wouldn't yeah. Patton yeah. and yeah. George C. Scott yeah. be be yeah. interesting? That's quite a conversation. Station. Like uh, yeah. like you took some license in that scene, <laughs> right, young yeah. man? Yeah. I wasn't <laughs> really like that. I, you know. <laughs> I just thought that. I thought that'd be how Athletes, interesting would that be? You know, it, it's kind of funny. I, 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 in some ways, I've had kind of a Forrest Gump life when it comes to being around athletes because I, <laughs> I spent a little bit of time as a hobby being a, uh, uh, an NBA writer. I actually oh. covered covered the NBA for a short period of time, and um, so I got to meet a, a lot of great, great basketball players: Jordan and David Robinson and uh, Lonzo Mourning and. A lot, lot of the, a lot of the greats, uh, Larry Bird, mm-hmm. um, and a lot of the coaches too as well. Uh, that was that was fun. So, uh, you know, having you know having dinner with somebody like a Michael Jordan or a uh, you know a Pat Riley or you know somebody somebody like that um, would would be kind of neat to, to go back there. And of course, tennis players. I mean, who, who wouldn't want to have dinner with uh, you know Rosewall and Laver and, and uh, even even go back further than that and get some of the the the, the, the uh, you know the legends, yeah. Um, like a Bill uh, Tilden, course. Don Budge. Oh yeah, yeah. That would be that would be kind of cool. Um, I knew I knew Rod Laver would come up. Rodney George Laver is exactly at least twice on the wall, right near Lane, right, right there. Yeah, the same right there. One here and one up there. Yes. Yeah, looking the yeah. other way. There we go. Point mine. And I got to you know it's funny this this event. I got to oh, hit yes. with Rod for a little bit, and 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 it's just amazing because I, you know, I was certainly much younger and, yeah. and hit a pretty good ball. And um, he he just as smooth as silk. He just he didn't hit it terribly hard, but he was all over the place. It was just all over the place. Unreal. Um, never missed a beat, and it, it was just a, a lot of fun. Lane, uh, how was, how old was Rod Laver when you hit with him? Oh God, he was probably in his fifties. Um, he was probably in his fifties. And you yeah. were in your thirties, I would guess. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was uh, it was it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I, I, I got a chance to uh, sit around and, 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 and really by the fireside and, and have a conversation with Arthur Ashwell. Oh wow! Uh, over a beer, that was fun. Tremendous. Um, he was speaking at a at a college, uh, actually Salem College in Winston Salem, yeah. and, and the family that that owned the apartment that I was living in at the time uh, hosted partly hosted the event. So you know, I got to pick him up at, at the airport. I mean, the, the hotel, and take him back and. Brought him to the house, and we you know, sat around, and had a conversation, and uh, it was it was great. I mean, just really special. Uh, um, played an exhibition with Stan Smith once with Charlie. I played with Charlie, um, Charlie yeah. Owens. Charlie, he and I yes. played Stan and another pro, and uh, worked. We actually worked him over pretty good. <laughs> that, was tough. that was that was a lot of fun. Stan, I saw Stan when he was at. Uh, we were in uh, the World Conference. I guess it's the one in Orlando. He was uh-huh. down there for for something. And uh, he remembered it. He remembered playing that match. So uh, it was fun. He's was like, fun. you remember that match we played? And you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember did. I kicked he, your he butt. Remembered it. <laughs> he remembered it. Yeah. That's the only butt he remembered that Al was, I hit him. I hit him with a ball once. Yeah, I accidentally. Oh, but, uh, he remembered that, yeah. L- Lane, w- w- when was that that you played Stan? That was during during uh, uh, one of these events, maybe the year before. Okay. Uh, it was just an exhibition match. So the, this is in the 90s, you'd say? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Did, was yeah. he wearing modern Adidas shoes, or was, yeah. was he wearing Stan no, he Smiths? Wearing his, he was wearing his shoes. He yeah. was wearing his Stans. And, and what about yeah. Rod Laver? Was Rod Laver wearing his Rod Lavers? You know what? I think he was. I think he was. <laughs> See, I was. Yeah. That's where I was going. I said <laughs> we they're both, going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be cool to have a shoe named after yourself? And everybody oh, knows it, it. You know, it's funny. The kids today, they don't they don't realize that the Stan Smith shoe. And the Stan Smith shoe comes in a whole bunch of colors now. I don't know if you guys have seen these. Oh, mm-hmm. I have. Yeah. I believe I have. I have three pairs. Some of them yeah, are really? prime knit. Some of them are hard. The hard leather, and yeah. my wide foot doesn't love them. But these new Stan Smiths, they're. I have a light blue and a light green prime knit, yep. and they fit amazingly well now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was uh, a great shoe. That love was a great shoe. Yeah. Yeah. East Coast or West Coast? East Coast, West Coast? East Coast. East Coast. Yeah. Southeast Coast. There we go. That's what I wanted to know in particular. Yeah, Yeah, I lived in California for for a while. That was was tough. California is a tough place to live. I I, I was managing clubs out there. I was working for a a, a billionaire. It was kind of interesting. I I worked for Ken Hoffman and and, uh, 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 managed the Big C Athletic Club out there. And um, he was the owner of the Oakland Athletics when I was there and also co-owner of the Seattle Seahawks. He and Ken Baring uh, owned the Seahawks. So it was kind of cool having baseball players come through the club all the time. And it, it was kind of neat. But Mr. Hoffman was a funny guy. He passed away a couple of years ago. And uh, he was uh, uh, he was an interesting he was an interesting man. You know, it's funny. Uh, uh, he could not tell you uh, what a gallon of gas cost. <laughs> he, he couldn't. He couldn't tell you what a movie ticket cost. No concept of cost. cash. Yeah, he just he just couldn't tell you any of that. Um, you know, he um, he loved baseball. He he really loved baseball, and he used to go to the, go to the ballpark all the time. Um, he hated the business of baseball. He thought that baseball players should work for minimum wage. He thought, you know, <laughs> right. a, a, you know, Mark McGuire could work for forty thousand dollars a year. You know, something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. It's a and privilege to play for. And that was plenty. Right. Um, he used to. Um, it was kind of funny because we had, we had tickets. We had about, I guess we had about eight, eight, ten tickets right behind the third, the first base line, and we would go down because we were in Concord, and and uh, all you had to do was go down through the Berkeley Tunnel down into down into Oakland, and you're and you're there, and um, he would fly, <laughs> he would fly the helicopter from the office to the to the game, yeah, ten minute flight. Uh, Buchanan Phil was right across from the office, and that's right. where he kept the, the jet and the helicopter. So he would fly from there to the game, and of course we would drive. We'd take and we'd go down for two or three innings, and the, and the trick was to beat him back before <laughs> he got back. And he wouldn't, he wouldn't get us, but uh, uh, it was it was a it was a it was fun fun time doing that. What, what, um, what years but, were you out there with with Oakland? What team? Nineties, right? Was that was that yeah, the Wire Conseco for, for Billy 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 Ball? Yeah. Um, I was there. I was there from eighty. What was it? Eighty nine. Oh. To um, about two thousand seven. So you saw the good teams then, when they were really, yeah. when they were the oh, swinging yeah, we saw the streak. We saw it all. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was good. Yeah. Good stuff. Tony Tony Larusa was there, and those guys. That yeah. was those guys. Yes, Ken yeah. Seiko, yes. Uh, Mark yeah. McGuire. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they were yeah. a really good team. Ricky Henderson, all those guys. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I, got, I got a Ricky Henderson ball right or something. I had a Mark McGuire really? ball somewhere. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. Carney yeah. Lansford. Yeah. Fun, funny you mentioned that drive from Concord into Berkeley and Oakland. Uh, that tunnel, my goodness, I, I love driving that tunnel because it's yep. 104 degrees in Concord and it's yep. about 68 in Berkeley right. and Oakland. When you come out the Crazy. when you come out the tunnel, come right. down the tunnel, come down the hills. Yeah. It, was it a half yeah. mile tunnel or something? It yeah. goes from like just on the other side of the hills. Yes. it's it's hot. It's like Texas right? or Sacramento. Or it's like yep. inland. Yeah, people have cowboy hats and ranches, and yep. then played, you cross. I a lot of tournaments in those in those hills. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was good. I played a lot of tournaments in there, yeah. all the way up and down. Good Mountain, stuff. Mountains Beach. Are you a mountain guy or beach guy? Beach. 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 All right. Lori's Mountains on beach. Yeah. Interesting. Like, yeah. Right. So you like beach, like Florida Beach or Bahamas or more? No, we actually we we go to the beach. My father's still alive. He's out on the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Oh, beautiful. And and um, we go to see him. Of course, we haven't been able to see him. Uh, lately, we were going to go this year. We usually go in the winter time. We go Thanksgiving. Um, we tie that with the West Virginia game when it's there, and then go over to see him uh, at the same time. 
and do Thanksgiving and, and uh, uh, we love the beach in the wintertime. It's, it's just yeah. great. Quiet, nobody there to bug in. Yeah. It's fun. So the Outer Banks kind of beach, not not like Destin or Cabo, no. those kind of places? No. Okay. Quiet, quiet beach. There we go. <laughs> quiet so, beach. I have a feeling which I know this answer. Sunrise or sunset? Sunrise. Yeah. yeah he's a morning person like me, for sure. Yeah. I knew that. Yeah. I could, uh, yeah. He, he is up working out at 415, 430? We get up, we get up about 430 every day. Incredible. Yeah, Even in the winter, when you are three hours away from the sun, you still yeah, get up. I, I, yeah, because I've got it. Not, one of my golfers starts at 545, and really? the other one starts at 6. So we, we, get, up, we get up early and... Uh, and usually I'll get some some kind of exercise in uh, before I uh, at the gym before we start, and then um, then do the rest during the day. So. This is this is easy for me in the summer where the sun comes up, but in the winter I really admire that you you are disciplined. I tell you, like this. when we had that cold spell, that yes. really heavy duty cold spell, yeah, full that week was, that was absolutely brutal. And I, I, I went out in it still, mm. and um, that that was that nearly that nearly pushed pushed me over the line there. I said, no way, I'm not going out there. But, we did it. We still did it. Love it. For those of you who are watching that uh, don't realize what we, we uh, Southerners, uh, it was not anything that probably Canadians, <laughs> Minnesota people, they'd laugh at us. Look, look at I know. We're, really? com- we're complaining that it was uh, 10 degrees here, <laughs> right. and it's yeah. rock solid 30 below up, up there. there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> a bunch of wimps. You know. We're crazy down yeah. here. What's your yeah. favorite season? Summer, fall, winter, spring? Uh, probably... Um, Probably fall, probably fall, because that's that's football time in Oklahoma. You know that. There we go. The leaves September, are starting to change, and September one starts. Look out! That's Incredible. Right. Actually, we actually we just had the spring game, so actually it's uh it's really April one. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yep. Hey, you're so uh, you you're... count the days until September. And you go to home games, or do you go to away ones? You mentioned West Virginia one. We go. We go both. Yeah. Incredible. We go everything. Yeah, what can, a fan! Uh, they, actually. If, if you go out the front door and look kind of to the left, you can see, actually see the stadium from here. You live right there in yeah. Norman, so right yeah, there. Yeah, just on the other side. Yeah, you can see Incredible. the lights at, at, in the morning at night. Yeah. That's beautiful. And gets to come down yeah. to Fair Park, go to the Cotton Bowl. And yeah. his team yep. isn't just a team with a stadium. <laughs> right. They're always national championship contenders. Right. Well, I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. Or almost always. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we come down. We come down to the Cotton Bowl every year. We went to uh, we went to the playoff games this year and uh, the bowl game in uh, – at Texas Stadium, yeah, yeah, and then uh, of course last year the um, Big Twelve, the Big Twelve games that are in Texas Stadium yeah. as well. So, so what, what got you interested in OU sports? Let's because I, I married into it. Oh, yeah, 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 Lori, 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 Lori yeah. been you know been here yeah. for years and years doing it, and, and just loves loves OU anything, right? Yeah, I mean it, it's fun. It's it's um, uh, it, it's very convenient, and uh, um, you know we always say always we're, you know, we're Carolina basketball fans. When Carolina's football team is terrible, and we're yes, Oklahoma course. football fans, and everything else. But uh, Carolina's got great tennis there. Oh yeah, and, uh, great tennis teams at Carolina. Yeah, the men just won the indoors two or three months ago. Yeah, um, and I, I don't think they're top four now in the outdoor season, but they yeah they're, they're, they're pretty they're, much they're dominated. The top 10. I think yeah, they're, definitely top ten for sure. Yeah, women are think yeah. number one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and then of course Wake Forest. Wake Forest was really good too. Yeah, Tony Bresky yeah. and his bunch up there did really well. Yeah. They won the tournament. Won the NCAA's what two years ago? Two years ago. That's right. Yep. And and several years ago, our buddy Noah Rubin was on their team. Yep. As a freshman, uh, did yep. really well. So Wake's yep. always tough. Yeah. Yep. When you when you when you have a spare moment, what do you like to do? Oh goodness, I you know I I, I I've got a few little little hobbies that I'll do. I've, I've created some uh, some cowboy racks that uh, oh, I, wow. I built out of some lumber that I had, some uh, wood that I bought. Um, some live live lumber, um, and um, yeah, I mean, I, I like working in my yard. I mean, I, we, we do stuff like that, and uh, and just spend spend time with with Lori. I you know I, yeah. I don't get to see her much during the day. Uh-huh. We actually work together, but she'll work a lot of times from home, and I'll I'll go to the office where I have all my stuff and I have to be there. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of what we do. Good answer there, and o, yeah. and OU sports. And they threw it, and, yeah, and for sure. Sports. She loves it too, so she goes too. Right. Yeah, so. All right, this third set. Oh yeah. Now we're back to tennis. All right. And that I don't do cold. <laughs> I it can be 130 degrees outside and calm, and I'm a happy camper. I'm fine. I just can't do wind, and I can't do cold. And you think, what in the world am I doing here? 
Right. So I do most <laughs> of my I do most of my teaching indoors, mm-hmm. um, and I, I I like that. And if I'm if I'm practicing, um, I'll, I'll I'll go indoors. Now, when I work with the high school kids up in Moore, I'm outdoors. Yeah. So I don't I don't mind that too much. Um, but um, yeah, mostly indoors. Most embarrassing moment in tennis. What- oh, this is a good one. This is a great. Story. Oh, it is. Oh, oh good. No. Oh. So, no. so I got two. I got two. Oh, good. good. And um, so I'm in California, and I'm I'm uh, a, a pro that used to work for me has gone to a new club, country club, and so we we used to practice together. Brad Dietzel, great guy. And um, so we decided we'd meet at his club, say, 6, 30, 7 in the morning. You just get it done and get out. So about 7 o'clock in the morning. So I, I had on a pair of shorts that weren't really traditional tennis shorts. They were just kind of workout type shorts. I may have worn them to work in the yard or something. And a shirt, and everything's fine. So I get out there, and I put my bag down, and I'm kind of getting my pockets all, all straightened out and set. And there's something in one of the pockets, and I can't quite figure out what it is. So I'm, I'm yanking at it and, and pulling and yanking. And finally, I just get irritated with it and kind of rip the pocket and just kind of pull it out, only to find out that I have broken open a tube of super glue oh. that was in my pocket. And oh. now my fingers are stuck together <laughs> just like this. So, so now i got a problem. It's 7 o'clock in the morning, and I have fingers stuck together, yeah. and I'm going to play tennis here in about another 25 minutes. Yeah. So I know there's a little country store down the road. So I, I actually went up to the clubhouse to see if I could find any any female employees up there that might have some fingernail polish. Yeah, turpentine, so nail polish remover, right. So, you know, Acetone. no female workers, no, no, no polish remover. So I go down to this little general store, and I'm, I, I'm walking in. I'm, I'm trying to navigate driving <laughs> yeah. too, with, with, with my fingers stuck together. Yeah, so you're I, talking like this or like, what is this Italian guy doing? <laughs> right. right? Yeah. <laughs> so, I, so I get there, and uh, I'm, I'm kind of walking down the aisles, and there's one lady there, and she's standing right in front of the one bottle of fingernail <laughs> polish remover. No. Um, no. So I'm like, I'm, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. She's kind of looking at me like she probably thinks I'm a, a store security guard. Yeah, like, like, what are you going to do? And so finally, finally she moves about a foot to the left, and yeah. I reached over and grabbed it and went up to the front. <laughs> And now I've got to navigate getting money out of my wallet. <laughs> Righty, lefty, yeah. And so, so finally, I, I, I got it all, got it out, took it outside, poured it on there, and got it back. And of oh. course, Brad's back at the club, and he has no idea what what's transpired. Here. He has no idea. <laughs> so I finally show up, and I walk out the court. He says, "You just getting here? Where you been?" So yeah, so I had to oh. explain it to him again. So that was that was one. Yeah. The other one was I was playing in Mill Valley. I know the town, was, yeah, Mount Tam, Sausalito. Yeah, this beautiful. is a level two, level two national tournament. Mm-hmm. And Al does tell you, I, I, I really have played most of my my best tennis ever as a senior. In the in the in the forties and forty fives. In uh-huh. fact, I was a NorCal Senior Player of the Year three times uh, while I was out there, but mostly in the forties and the forty fives. And so I, I'm playing. I, it was a semifinal match in this this big tournament, big crowd there. Uh, ball boys, umpires, the whole the whole bit, and so we're in the locker room, and the umpire comes up, this nice older lady. Uh, she came in, kind of said, "Okay, guys, it's time to go." Mm-hmm. So I mean, just like the big times. So, so we walk out, and I go out to the court, and we're going to walk up to the net, and she's going to flip the coin. So I said, "Okay." Uh, so she flips a coin, and uh, okay, Mr. Evans, you can you can you serve first, okay? So she hands me the balls. And I go to put them in my pocket. Uh-oh. Only discover my shorts are not only on backwards, they're inside out. Oh. <laughs> they're inside out. So I, I, I never never noticed it at all. Never noticed it at all. That's concentration. So, so I, I go back up to the net, and I, yeah. and I, I look there, and I go, I got to go back inside for a yeah, second. Yeah, I need a few so minutes. What's the matter? And I kind of look down, she goes, Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> so, so I head back. I don't. I don't think anybody picked up on it. But I love it. They hey, had an opportunity. To. Was this at Boyle Park or Mill Valley Tennis Club or Mill which... Valley Tennis Center? Yeah, yeah. Tennis yeah. Center. Beautiful, beautiful place. Yeah, yeah great place. Yeah, yeah. Great that place. clubhouse is uh, the parties in there. Legendary, old, old, oh, yeah. beautiful clubhouse. I played yeah. that tournament for years. It was a great, great event. Yeah, it's oh, awesome. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Real good stuff. Favorite tournament. Now, it can be one you played in or maybe that you visited, you know, maybe like the Australian Open or maybe like the Mill Valley Open. I mean, what, you, you what's know, your favorite tournament? 
you know, I used to, I mean, this was when I was a lot younger, but I used to really enjoy the American Airlines tennis games that were played in Tucson oh, at the wow. Racquet Club. That's mm. where Jim Refkin was yes. mm. way back in the day and uh, uh, before he went to Randolph Park. And, uh, you know, it was it was really easy because I would be out there all day watching matches that stay there at night, watch, and the players back then would go out and practice on the courts and nobody would pay attention to them. So I remember being out on a back court, mm -hmm. sitting there watching – Board oh. practice with Panada. Adriano with, Panada, wow. With with Tyriac coaching him. Interesting. On the same court. And Tyriac coached uh, Adriano, right? I yeah. believe so. Yeah. 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 And yeah. was Berglin there coaching Berglund, Bjorn? Berglin was there. Yeah, yeah he was there. Poor. But but that's and, there, and it's me and them. And that's it. Intense meeting of yeah, minds that was, that was and fun. two of the most stylish, beautiful players of that era. That was fun. Or certainly of my and childhood, then, um, yeah. And then I got to play up in New Hampshire, too, at the Volvo International a oh, qualifier man. that was there. You know, I actually played a pre-qualifier. We had, a, we had a, a group that played sort of a pre-qualifier to get to the qualifier, and I'll never forget it. Um, Yannick Noah. Yannick Noah was playing Billy Martin. Remember Billy Martin? Oh, from sure, UCLA, UCLA and yeah. he was number one junior in the world. Uh, yeah, I'll long... never forget. Yannick Noah from the, from the warm-up was full blast he there was no warm-up he just he was just full blast the whole time he worked up a sweat in the yeah. warm-up um but yeah great great tournament wow. to watch Velos hey, was there was that north uh, conway new hampshire yeah yeah, yeah i Cranmore. remember that event yeah Mount Cranmore, yeah stadium uh connor's was there um yeah, it was it was great. Yeah, all the all those little summers. There. Yeah, there was then Stowe, I mean, Stowe, the, Stratton Mountain, Stratton Vermont. Mountain. Yeah. It seemed like there were like yeah. three or four little tournaments there yeah. around in a this, row, right before the U.S. Open. Uh, yeah. Yo Johan Creek was telling us they would drive from all these events, and yeah. that guy remembered almost every name in yeah. the old draw. Uh, yeah. Jose Luis Clerk, I'm sure you yeah. saw him at that one, yeah. and yeah. it was on Hart True at the time, wasn't it? Well, it was on Red. It oh, was on Red, Red, Red oh. Clay yeah. at, in your yeah. era. Okay, Red yeah. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. funny. I, I I taught at a camp up there that summer, uh -huh. at Camp Monarchy in New Hampshire, from, uh, during college. I uh, taught tennis up there, and um, you know you had to camp with the kids, and and you have cabins and stuff like that. But I I, I wasn't much of a camper. I, I got to tell you, I, that that's outside my <laughs> my, my wheelhouse. Um, but, but but prior to the camp starting, the one part that was always interesting to me, they have they they make you do a, a couple of things like like swim they make you swim a mile yeah the mile swim yeah yeah so so they bring you out on the dock and they say okay see where the buoys are you're just gonna swim around the buoys and they'll make a big deal out of it now this is in june okay this is in early june so the water is cold as i look up Still. i see mount washington in the distance uh -huh. and it's covered with white stuff yeah <laughs> and i'm thinking i'm thinking you know i bet that comes down Mount Washington and works <laughs> into the waterways yeah. and is probably right underneath this dock. Yeah. So you, you, so I dive in yeah. and I'm just completely paralyzed, uh, completely paralyzed. It's and freezing, so I, yeah. Yeah, I, I come out of the water and I got to swim a mile in this 40-degree <laughs> water. Um, so, yeah, it, it, uh, it, was, it was a challenge, but uh, that, was a, that was a fun time. That was a fun tennis time. Do you like to watch tennis on TV? I you don't. No? no, I don't watch a lot of tennis on TV. Interesting. I, I will, I will, um, I will watch a lot of the the back channel matches um, at the majors. Yeah, uh, I I really enjoy the, um, the 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 clay court events that are going on now. Yeah, leading up to the French Open. Um, but you know, during the winter time when they're playing indoors in Prague, I, I yeah. that that yeah, I won't I won't tune into that. Um, no interest, but. But I like I, I do like watching the, the majors, and I'll, I'll I'll watch a lot of the back matches. That, mm -hmm. That's what I really enjoy doing. Who's your favorite player? Our players. Um, we're, we're fed. We're fed people here. We're, we're fed people. No no doubt about it. Yeah. Um, what about Rafa? You like Rafa? Uh, yeah, I mean I, I like them all. I don't. I mean that's not. I'm not like you know. I don't really pick a lot of sides. But I'm 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 a fed player. I really like his technique. I like his mechanics. Um, I use. You know, to describe, you know, when I'm describing to players how to do something, I usually use Fed as a as a, as a good example of, of how to do certain things. Um, 
So, Rafa, Rafa, you don't get used by uh, by Lane, you know, as a. Yeah. Uh, well, I am also a very, very big federal fan, no? Like uh, Coach Evans, no? I, I, I appreciate the, the very diplomatic answer, Lane. Uh, I, I thank you very much, no? Yeah. I, you know, it's just, it's just hard to relate to the way that he yeah. plays uh, to, to a, my players. Um, Djokovic has great, great mechanics. A lot of great players come along. You know, Medvedev, to me, is one of the scariest people I've ever seen. <laughs> Um, he, he, he just frightens me just to blow it. I would hate to beat it with him street or something. Um, but he is, he is scary, powerful, yeah. um, and really hits it, hits, hits the ball well. And moves so yeah. well. He's he, like a, he's he like does. an he octopus. He doesn't look like that from on the surface, but boy, can he do it. Oh. Yeah, he's, he's great. He's like yeah. a six inch taller Peter Corda. He's yeah. like Corda yeah, only right? six, six. Yeah. And he crushes the ball. He's right. amazing. But about twice as fast. Yeah. 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 All right, so this is – I've saved this question. I haven't asked this many times uh -oh. on, on this, okay. this. The fitness methods you're employing today, what, what do you do? Fitness for, method to take For you? myself? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I do a lot of walking. That, that's, that's the main thing I do. I'll walk in the morning. I'll walk at night. Um, and when I go to the gym in the morning, I'll, I will do some weight training, and I'll do some TRX work. Um, luckily for me, um, a couple of my athletes – are, are good enough that I can work out with them. So when we're doing med ball work, I'm doing the same work as they yes, are. Yes, I love it. Um, so so I'm, I'm, I'm getting some of that myself. Um, so, yeah, I, I, and that's, that's pretty regular. That's, that's almost every day. Interesting. Because so, you know. I haven't asked that question to a lot yeah. of people, but I, I've always – yeah, I was saving it just for you because I yeah, knew well, that – because you're in you the know, fitness. Over the, over the past year, I guess, I guess it's been about a, almost two years now, I've lost 60 pounds. Unreal. 60 pounds. So I, do. I went from I went from an ugly 215 maybe somewhere in there to about 160 this morning. Unbelievable. Yeah. So that and that I got that, you know, mostly from just watching what I eat and, and making sure that I get the exercise in. Do you, do you uh, try to get 10,000 steps in a day, or is there some well, I'm, preset? I'm, I'm, pushing, I'm pushing 20 a day. Easy. Right. Yeah. So that's yeah. so you're you're trying to get several miles in, or just walking yeah. and just getting out. Oh yeah. Now, do you yeah. walk fast, or do you just walk and just enjoy the scenery? No, I, I I I just do maybe a, you know, Lori walks really fast. She walks over four miles an hour. And I I'm I'm more about three seven three eight somewhere in there. So I just kind of take my time. It takes me a little longer if I go a little bit further. Um, and I'll walk faster or slower, you know, just just whatever I feel like doing. But it's mostly distance. It's mostly endurance type stuff. Um, do, you, do you listen you to know, things? I, do you like listen to podcasts or listen to the radio? Yeah, or do you yeah, just kind of take I it? Okay. But you know, it's interesting. My injuries. You know, I, I, I didn't talk much about that, but yeah, um, I've had uh, two uh, Achilles tear and twos, complete tear and twos, left and right. I've had rotator surgery. Um, I've had meniscus surgery on my left knee, and I've had both hip replaced. So I can't, I can't run in a straight line like run, jog, that kind of run. But I can move laterally, diagonally on a tennis court without any issues at all, really. Um, so, uh, so I'm I'm grateful for that. But uh, I just can't run. I can't run in a straight line. Um, jumping rope is a little bit problematic for me. But um, but yeah, everything else seems to be seems to be fine. So when you get stopped at two at night by the Oklahoma Highway Patrol, they don't, they don't ask you to walk a straight line, do they? <laughs> can't do it. I just can't do it. He, he, You're in the jail. He doesn't even luckily. drink, and he gets DUIs every Friday night. L it's luckily, crazy. I know most of them now, so, so they, uh, they'd probably let me off the hook anyway. They what sport would you play if it wasn't tennis? If it wasn't the great game, the great game you didn't, didn't find you, what, what would you be? Playing. I would have been a point guard, probably yeah. basketball. basketball guard. Guard. Excellent. Or, or I would have been a kicker because I actually kicked in, in uh, uh, junior high, actually. Interesting. And they wanted me to kick in high school, but I wanted to play tennis. Interesting. So I actually kicked field goals in junior high, which is rare. You don't see that much. Yeah. Yeah. I bet you could actually, punt point. too. You're a strong fellow punt. with the good legs. You could probably punt, punt, punt really yeah. well. Yeah. Punt and kick. Yeah. yeah punt too. Interesting. Yeah. yeah that's. Yeah. A good skill to have. That's that's yeah. why he was a good tennis player. He could do yeah. what he was saying. Yeah, multiple sports. Yeah, newspapers and football. football. And basketball. He can yeah, practice kicking over wires and little targets and stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. great. <laughs> All right, last last uh, two questions. We're uh -huh. round in the corner. If you wouldn't be been involved in sports in the way you are so heavily, what, what would you be doing right now? You think? 
Hmm. I know you have a side uh, business also I, too, but just thinking about when you go go back and think, you know, tennis has been such a great part of your life. What would you have been doing if that really wasn't involved? I probably would have gravitated more into business. I wasn't smart enough to be a doctor. Um, your dad came from that, though, right? Yeah, my dad yeah. Did, it was an interesting. But he was a psychiatrist. Oh, and, that uh, kind retired of... retired now, but uh, he came through. Uh, he went to uh, Carolina. Went to Carolina undergrad. Chapel Hill. Carolina Medical Carolina Medical School. Wow. And um, but he came through at a time where they didn't have specialized medicine. So when he came out of medical school, he was a doctor. So he could work in an emergency room. He could deliver babies. He could you know do surgeries of all kinds. I mean, it was really interesting yeah that he could do that um but um and then he, he he specialized a little bit later on but um uh i i don't uh yeah i probably would have gravitated more toward business business toward business yeah so i can't sing or dance so <laughs> I, know, I know that would be out or, or I thought I thought you might be a mathematician. You like teach, <laughs> teach math at, at High Point College. It, it, it crossed my mind, you know, very quickly. It crossed, <laughs> but uh, yeah, didn't didn't quite make it. It crossed his mind at the it. speed of didn't light. Make the cut. Right. Yeah. All right. Last question. This is one the, the creme de la creme, the big the big big Kahuna right here. If you were commissioner of the great game and you could make a change, changes or not. You know, it, what, what would you do for the great game? Do you like it the way it is? Do, you know, we've had a lot of interesting answers. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's it, it's interesting. I think that I would um, probably have to address uh, college tennis. College tennis would be a big one yes. um, to, to make sure that there were plenty of opportunities for our American players. Um, I would address uh, parents in, in junior tennis and their involvement and how and what they can and can't do. I think that would be uh, one that would be really important as well. Um, yeah, I think those would those would be the two 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 big ones. Um, it, our game is our game is is solid. It's it's um it's it's doing uh, what it's supposed to do. Um, you know, it's they say it's you know game of a lifetime. You know, it's funny. I, I, I tell the story uh, sometimes too. I had an English professor in college when I was there the first time. Mm-hmm. And, and, and he was he taught 17th century literature. His name was Dr. Melman. And he just could not stand athletes. And he particularly, <laughs> he particularly didn't like me. He just, no. just was relentless. And, and one day he was just having a, a, just a banner day. And uh, he, he was all over the place. Huh. Finally, he goes up to his desk and he slams his book down. He turns around and looks square, square at me and he goes, what do you think you're going to do? Play tennis all your life? <laughs> so I, I believe I got the last laugh. <laughs> you did, and here you yeah. are. <laughs> was he back at, at High Point when you came back High the point, second time? Yeah. Was, was he there the second time when you you came through? Was, no, 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 no. He was long gone. By yeah. thank goodness. If we can, if we can find him, I'm buying him. No, a ten, I'm no, buying him a tennis lesson him. with Lane. Don't him. <laughs> I, I don't, don't know don't if he's passed him. away, but if he has, don't go find him. Don't, don't look for him. Yeah. Leave him, leave him there. He's, he's, I just want him to take a tennis lesson right. from you, and, you, and you'll be like, "Look, you know this stuff. Right. We're going to hit volleys today, there. Dr. Melman." Leave him there. Leave him there. Well, That's great. Lane Evans, we've taken over two hours of your time. Oh, what a right, delightful thank you. conversation! Thank you. Full of. I got I to gotta, I gotta do one more thing. I got to give yeah. a shout out to my wife. I haven't. We haven't talked about her, but yeah. oh, no, you, Lori, please, just keep going. Yeah, none of none of this happens without her. So beautiful. She's, she's been the rock. Um, and she'll she'll tell you the story when she sees you. But good, you know, we went to high school together. We we actually went to Hunter Huss together. Wow, we graduated in the same class, <clears throat> and we did not know each other. Come on, how many kids yeah. in your class? I don't know, a couple of hundred, maybe. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. You not only went to the same high school, same time, same time, graduating the same class, same same ceremony. Crazy. She says she knows she she says she knew me, but I didn't know her. I see. <laughs> She was probably what three rows behind me, and, and <laughs> never, never, never knew her. Didn't know her for what thirty more years, thirty years. So you weren't high school sweethearts. You weren't even high school acquaintances. And nope. you and you knew probably nope. the same people. Probably knew some several of the same people, but just never had inter interaction yep. together, huh? 
Yeah, we just never, never, we probably passed each other a hundred times in the hallways, just never knew it. And she was doing math classes and you weren't. You know, so. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I always tell people, she's the brains, I'm, I'm the yeah. comedy act. That's, well, that's I, it. I can't wait to meet her next time you're in Texas. Yeah. We're going to have some lunch together. Mm-hmm. Craig, as you there. can see, went with the crimson at the net hat. I went with more of a Carolina blue in honor, like in yeah. honor of both your favorite schools. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tell us if there is a, uh, I know you answered the commissioner of tennis question well, but next to me is a, I think of him as kind of a commissioner of tennis, uh, at least in, in our great state of Texas, but he's also the commissioner of barbecue. Yes. Would you, if, if, if you had to choose, would you, I know, would you, oh, sorry. Would you choose the Carolina barbecue or the more Oklahoma, Texas vibe? Absolutely. Kepley's. Kepley's Barbecue in High Point, North Carolina. Uh, Bullock's down in Durham. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, uh, oh. Bridges in Shelby. Uh huh, North Carolina. So you go, you go pork, pork, and you're vinegar. more vinegar pork barbecue style. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm, that moves. Yeah. Don't don't be hitting Bring south it. of the Red River. <laughs> <laughs> and hush puppies. Uh, they have the special hush puppies with the little corn oh, in it, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Lane, good stuff, yes. man. Such a fun, uh, fun evening with you, and yeah. huge thanks. And can't yeah, wait so. to have lunch with you. Hit some balls when you're oh, down yeah. here. Yeah, he'll be down. Yeah. We'll, we'll, do we'll, we'll take you to some good barbecue. Good. We, we, anybody that comes, we always tell them. We'll, we'll any of our guests. We we got it. Uh, let's see. Uh, we got Mike Barrel coming. Mike Barrel. Yeah, yeah. Mike Barrel. Yeah. He's going to come. Raleigh. He, he eats the barbecue like I eat. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we've had. He's, a, he's, he's 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 gone to the. He's he's on our side now. He's he's come from the dark side. Now he's over. He's, he's on our side now. He's, he's for, uh, he loves that Carolina barbecue. Oh yeah. no, I thought you said he well, he's coming from England. You know, he's coming over to the states now. So that's that's yeah. awesome yeah. too. He, he's he's uh, an American. Yeah. Uh, yeah, with a British accent. With a yeah. British accent, he was yeah, he exactly. was a ni- he was a really nice guy. Very interesting. Last week was last week. Week before. it was a great yeah. guest. Yeah, I, I watched it. it. I watched. Oh, it. that's right. You were in the comments. Yeah, I was that's on, right. Yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah he's, right. he's that was very, fun. Yeah, we're gonna take him. He's to, a good guy. We're gonna take, guy. Him, take him to some real barbecue. So we'll. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank yeah. You. Well, my daughter lives in North Carolina. That's right. You're Charlotte. kind of both too. Yeah, yeah she likes. She's in Charlotte. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah she good. likes. She likes good. the 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 pork, which isn't bad. I, I, it just I don't like vinegar sauce. I'm not a real vinegar type person. I, I'm more the traditional ketchup, you know, tomato based. Uh, uh, sauce that we used in where you, Texas. Where she's got to go, where she's got to go is Tony's Ice Cream. That's in Gastonia. Really? Okay. And they've got, you know, they've got a zillion different homemade flavors of ice cream. Everything from grape to uh, all, you name it. They've wow. got everything. But they also have this little greasy, nasty little bar- <laughs> grill thing that on the side. Uh-huh. You can get liver mush sandwiches. Oh, liver wow. mush. mush sandwiches. Liver mush. Yeah. And you think spam has unidentifiable <laughs> meat in it? Yeah. Believe me, this is crazy stuff. This they they eat it like there's no tomorrow. I I, yeah. I don't know what the appeal is. Is, but, uh, is that like pickle pickles? Pickled fig, pig's feet, you know, you see those in the, the huge jars, jars right? So, in some of the far, Oklahoma. Far worse. Oh, far it's worse. even oh. worse. But, oh. but uh, weirdly enough, it's a blue zone. Those people have so much iron in their blood, uh, they're living to 110, you right. know? <laughs> Eating all that and liver. You can, you can get it all for like 35 cents. I mean, it <laughs> it's nothing. the cheapest you, food. You can eat for a month in there for like $5. It's, oh, it's man. T- Tony's Ice Cream in Gastonia. <laughs> Tony's North Ice Cream, yeah. Okay, well, I'll have right to Right there on Main Street. Come yeah. for the ice cream, stay for the liver. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. And then t- you can't ever leave because you can't get out the door. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's terrible. Well, Lane, yeah, we, we, appreciate, from it. we appreciate your time. You know, it's you always, it. always a pleasure. Once again, Westwood Country. Club or Westwood, Westwood, tennis, Westwood tennis, 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 center. tennis Center. Westwood Tennis Center. Yeah. yeah. Look for Lane Evans, and you, you'll be you'll be up there at some point in the afternoon, hanging around. People can come by and see and get the get the secret sauce, right? They can find me. Yeah, they can find me. All Good right. stuff, Lane. Big yeah. thanks. Right. Have a great thanks, evening, guys. Thank All right, you. I'll see you guys soon. Yes, you no, bet. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lane. Right. See, see you in the funny thanks. papers, as they say. All right, take care. You All bet. Right. Craig Bell, what a great episode! Oh, what, that was fantastic awesome. guest. Yeah, wow. Lane. Yeah, we could we could have gone a lot further. Oh yeah, yeah. but he's yeah. a part two guy at some oh, point. Yeah, absolutely. we need him as a second uh, second time. Yeah, we're over two hours right now, so yeah. we'd, we'd like to. Keep, we better wrap we, it. We, yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. We, we just get going. We just have a good time. And yeah. I look up, it's like whoa. It's yeah, look at the clock. Yeah. Ten twenty five. So we we well, appreciate folks that. at home. Thanks for hanging with us. I uh, hope you learned as much as we did through Lane Evans. That was awesome. Yeah, he's, he's a great uh, great guest. Uh, very interesting person has a lot of unique uh, 
uh, skill sets that uh, just always seems to be learning. I mean, he, he's uh, said that uh, when he retires, if he ever retires he, uh, in our pre-show banner, he's going to be a farrier. Yeah, and he's going to learn horseshoe, a farrier, yes. uh, iron, working with iron. Right. Shoes of a horse. That's correct. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. So it's it, just an interesting guy. Lane, we appreciate it uh, very much. Even though we, you, we don't like your taste in barbecue, <laughs> you're still okay. That's right. you're, you're a good egg. So, right. so should we get a uh, little Jimmy Campbell up James here going? James Campbell. We'll get him going here and all queued up right now, and we'll sign off here. Thanks for listening to Season 1, Episode 86. 86. 86. That was a good one. That was that, a that good year. Of After That Podcast. Join us next week as we'll be talking with USPTA tennis professional, former ATP tour veteran and cancer survivor, uh, G-Man, Greg Manning. Greg Manning. Uh, he is a businessman, a coach. We're going to learn a lot about him, and it's going to be a little bit of an emotional show, too. Oh, yeah. No, no. You won't want to miss this because no. this man is, is has nine lives. He used them all up. It's several years ago and he's he's you know it, it's just a remarkable story how one man's will to succeed has has uh, come come true greg manning is going to be our guest next week uh, also join us wednesday evening for tennis shorts we're back you know, we're back on the shorts warmer, we're back yeah, we've got our shorts back on <laughs> wednesday night instagram eight central nine eastern yes yes and there's two legs of the short right that's right two pockets two legs we always ask what's in craig bell's tennis shorts and there's not much there i I can tell you that there's never nothing there. So last week, sorry, I was uh, at my daughter's graduation. Up Huge congrats, by the yeah. way. I love those photos. Andrea, Thank you. Andrea Catherine Bell, love you. Uh, she did a great job. Uh, uh, major in psychology, double minor, criminal justice, and uh, sociology. That kid is so charismatic and joyful, and she got married and graduated in the same 12 months. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, Amazing kid. So that's uh, Wednesday night. We'll be we'll be back at it, uh, talking uh, a little bit. Do we have a guest do it this Wednesday? I think we uh, this Wednesday is probably just you and me, and okay. then uh, and then we'll get back to some guests yeah. on Wednesday. Yeah, a lot of times we have guests, yeah. or sometimes about we, once a month we like yeah. to do just Craig and me. Yeah. So, uh, and lastly, be sure to tell a friend or friends because hopefully your peeps like us and they want to become netheads, right? That's it. Right. So, well, that's, how, how do you become a nethead? I just like or follow. Like, us. subscribe, follow. You know what to do. Share, and uh, we'll send you a hat yeah, too. Maybe, maybe yeah, maybe, baby. Yeah, like that. You yeah. got, got some really cool swag. We got great, great new colors. Yeah, let's right. use them. Well, lastly, that's it. That's it tonight, right? I guess that's uh, we should sign off probably. That is the right. tennis news as it seems to, to us. us. But also, good night from Dallas, Texas, and happy Mother's Day. Thanks happy to Mother's all the Day, mothers. everybody. Out there, right there. So we appreciate you all for uh, being uh, in our lives, right? That's it. Thank you. Hey, we, we actually went over the exit we, music. Right, right to the 